Ben, Ben, Ben. Tom, Tom, Tom. Ben, 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 Ben. It is Tom and Ben. Welcome, everybody. How Welcome. You doing? Welcome. Very good, thank you. Very good. It's good to be back. Yeah. I'm sorry I had to leave you with my beautiful replacement. Beautiful. Oh, did Daph not come? Wait, we could have had Daph. Yeah, I asked Daph to sit in for me last Fuck. week. Oh, God. Oh, shit. What, what happened? Garbage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know how we have the, uh, like, half, uh, half, half glass of water and piss? Mm -hmm. This Delicious. was, like, water and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which might just be worse than shit on its own. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> because you've spread it out over, like, a wider oh, area. Oh, my God. Easier to spill, right? <laughs> If you've got that glass, everywhere. <laughs> like, I feel like you could knock over that glass of just shit mm. and quickly, like, pick it up and it wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, you're keeping that contained. <laughs> Whereas that liquid shit, <laughs> ugh, super bad. Uh, <gasps> she broke the gnome. Oh, yeah, she broke the gnome. Like, have a oh feel God. of the gnome. Oh, do I want to touch it? <laughs> what did she do to it? I don't know, but just give it, like, a little flex <gasps> in areas. And his, his head, all, she almost ripped his head off as well. Oh, my God. What were you doing? What was, what was happening? How how horny did it get in here? What uh, the fuck? Not very horny. Because uh, there was no um, Kickstarter roulette. What? Feels bad. That's like the best part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's saying something. <laughs> we'll be trying to avoid looking at, uh, you know, horny SDLs. Yeah. Who'd have uh, thought that was a segment? Well, you know... We made it one. Uh, but yeah, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay. I'm actually real, real sleepy and ill. I was, I was away last week because I uh, took my boy to go see my family. Um, and I just got real sick and I was coughing and snotting all week. And I'm still, Gross. I'm still all tired from that. That is not um, super fun. It's not super fun. So I'll just like, fair warning, I'm, I might get sleepy and cough a lot and, and have to leave. Um, we'll see how not a problem. I'll try and, uh, I'll try and, Make it make our way through. So yeah, we might need to uh, wrap it up at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give it a go. Uh, is there any cool? Um, I did a little bit of of Warhammies. Um, show me. I can show you, Thomas. So a lovely, very kind Vod Goblin sent me a present. I um, they sent me a pack of Forge World. Multi melters for Horus Heresy because apparently they'd won like a Forge World gift voucher, but they because they lived outside of the UK, it would cost them more to ship <laughs> than the okay, value so of the item. So yeah. instead, they just um, it just appeared on on my desk at work and they sent it to me instead of themselves. Wow! So that was real kind. So I painted them up. These uh, Forge World multi melter boys. Um, I had a couple of spare bodies left over from some conversions. So nice. I just, um, bashed them together. Uh, then somehow I managed to like not do quite as good a job on them as my like last set of heresy boys because I forgot the recipe, but I think they're fine. I think they look very pretty. Yeah, I think they're all right. Um, but I am going to have a, a real whinge. Um, this is entirely not the Vodgobo's fault. That was a very kind thing to send me. But did you know? Um, Forge World, multi melters. Did you know? Did you know that? These, the, the pipes come like this. And there's a very specific like point where the pipe's gonna go into each item, which is depending on the shape of the body, it's in a slightly different place and the shape of the arm that's holding it. And um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I've built a lot of really tricky models in my 30 years of building Warhammer. Yeah. I have never sworn as much. Oh my God, it looks... <laughs> Trying to bend these fucking pipes. Awful. And have them still... Because the real problem was I normally bend resin in like hot water. Ooh. You dip it, you boil some water in a kettle, you stick it in a mug, you dip the resin into the mug, leave it for a minute, you pull the resin out and then you can shape it how you want and get it straight and nice because forge rod resin is always warped. Um, yeah. But you, that didn't work for these. Like you pull them out and you could bend them a little bit, but no way. You can't do the like the 180 degree mega bend from that. They start to like break. So I had to like blast it with a hairdryer for fucking ages. 
and then bend it to the right shape, and then try and glue it in, and then realize, you know what, this isn't actually the right angle. It's slightly off, and it doesn't connect up right. I'll blast it with the hairdryer again, but that doesn't just let you adjust it. That immediately makes it spring back into its perfect straight form the moment it gets hot again. It's got like a, like a heat memory of its like original shape, and it always wants to be like this. It sounds like absolute hell. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, um, just just don't, I reckon. You know, use the new plastic ones. <laughs> don't spare yourself my agony. That just seems awful. Oh, just use a heat gun like a man. I, I think I would, it would have been the same if I'd used a heat gun, but it would have been slightly quicker. In all it, honesty. It sounds like just hell. Um, there we go. I think I'd have just been half tempted after trying the first one, just being like, <laughs> or if I'd snapped one of them, be like, fuck it, none of them have pipes, they yeah. just hold their multi melters. Yeah, I think if one of them had snapped, I probably would have thrown them all in the bin. <laughs> I was getting real angry. Oh, God. <laughs> but I got there in the end and I was like, committed. Oh, God. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Well, there we go. The hidden pain behind Forge World heavy weapons. Um, but I thought these would be cool because I can use them in my Horus Heresy army or I can use them in the new 40k as like a Devastator squad. That's why I did this guy with the um, the beep bop. Um, the beep boop. Does yeah. he not get a big gun? Well, in Heresy, everyone has a big gun. So that's why I've got five multi-melters for Heresy. And then I did an extra guy with a beep bop and he will replace the white shoulder pad guy as the because in 40k, the sergeant doesn't get a heavy weapon. Right. He gets a, like a Sig Sigmund... Sig What's it called? Sigmund. The Signum. The Signum. Which is like the little meat morper that sergeants hold. Uh, okay, uh, all specs. It's like an all specs, but it helps them shoot good uh, instead of scanning. Okay. A biver. That's the one. Very cool. I so there we go. cannot wait for them to melt, melt my face. Oh, they're going to melt you so good. And they're going to melt you in my brand new drop pod, Tom. Wow. Boom. I found this on Etsy for £10. Ooh. People like 3D print them either closed or crashed or half submerged or open. And they're so much easier to build. As then I just have to glue the doors on. <laughs> and cost 20% of the Games Workshop ones. Amazing. Drop pods always look cool. They do. Drop pods are fucking awesome. But apparently the Games Workshop ones are a pain to build. Oh. And cost like 40 quid. So I highly recommend anyone who wants a drop pod just literally type drop pod into Etsy or eBay. Get one of these. Gross. Because they're cool. Uh, well, I hope to see a drop pod dropping near my mans. Yeah. You're going to get toasty, Tom. I'm going to melt, melt your face. Don't melt me. I'm going to melt you. Don't melt me, please. I also did those heavy bolter guys so that I can turn my heresy bolt gun guys into 40k tactical squads. Because you have to have the heavy weapon now. Oh. You don't get in heresy. Oh. They've got a multi-purpose army now. Don't do a whole new army. Just add five models to your old army and make it new. And it can work in any system you like. Hooray. Mm. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah. There we go. That's all my Warhemmies for the last, like, three weeks. I'm chipping away at those guys. Did we see one of our vids was used by the Dutch Ministry of Defense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did I miss that? I check their website every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we haven't, for the last couple of weeks, we haven't done what's new in the Dutch Ministry of Defense. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, it's part of our European Defense Roundup. Right. And we did Holland, like, six okay. months ago. So it was going to be a while before we got back round to them. Right. What? <laughs> Please explain. I hope it's Was like, it, don't be like these people. <laughs> these degenerates. Um, <laughs> what? Oh. What is that? <laughs> or are they using it as like a torture thing? They're just playing videos of Tom and Ben to people trapped in a cell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is what we want to avoid our country becoming. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy molies. Uh, you, you've got to explain. Put a link in or like something we can search for. Um, they use a RimWorld video to explain map analysis. 
oh my god, are we in one of those training videos? Where they're like, this is how to use a map, and how it's Tom and Ben. Bad is there. <laughs> Defense? <laughs> Wow, man, just invade Holland, apparently. They I don't know what they're doing. Don't know if I would trust us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Working Bij Defensi. Is it literally on the front page? Please. <laughs> Please let old Tom and Ben... Generation D. D, oh. these nuts. <laughs> Are we like, generation degenerate. Okay. Are we in this video? Come on, you need to explain more. It's on YouTube. Oh. God, are we, is this a trap? Maybe. Games versus reality. Can G. Bowen met? In mass. Yeah, yeah, there's I'm with you, and meisjes. Oh, it's Dutch military Tom and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Can ye bowen met ein mess? Games versus. Okay, so I'm guessing we're the. Games versus yeah, yeah, reality. 1308. Wow, Mahons, that was fucking quick. Oh my god. <laughs> Um. <laughs> so, hang on, are we now getting reacted to <laughs> by fucking hot military Tom and Ben? <laughs> I think so. Are they going to make fun of us like we make fun of the Games Workshop Tom and Ben? <laughs> Fuck! They are, they're just talking about how, how we're fucking... Us. We don't make fun of the Games Workshop Tom and Ben, we just compare ourselves to, to them, Ben. That's true. <laughs> uh... Oh my god, okay, I don't know if I can handle getting fucking dunked on by these chads, but... Okay, can we... do it. Should we do translated subtitles? Yeah! Um... Uh... Auto -translate. auto translate, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Walk for pocket to be hiding in. Okay. Yeah. Like wall that in, and we can have just an instant cave or this place. Oh, that place. That's cute. That's pretty good too. It's all soft sand though. Can't really build on it. Oh, that's true. Uh, this has got plenty of steel lying around. Oh shit! Just bug. Bug bits. Are they corpses? It's robo robo holes. Well, what we need to look at first is where we can plant. Yeah, that's. Kind it's of stuck of their that's fucking stuck watermark right yeah. over our link. You motherfucker! Is there a button to show select. fertility? Oh. Oh, isn't there? It's just the brown that isn't the sand. Is well, like where some brown is browner than other brown. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Some brown is brown than another brown. Yeah, but maybe just those bits. Mm. These like two greens. These two greens look yeah, like the best combination the between plantable and defendable. Yeah. No. There's some two here that are very hard on the... Well, so full of it's a good card study. Yeah, we've got to get Xylus in <laughs> to <laughs> like, translate for us. Oh, shit, I hit back. <laughs> are, they, are they being mean or what? I don't understand. <laughs> the translation is not working. They're complimenting us. Are they? Yes, that one could identify the difference, difference between shades of brown. <laughs> <laughs> Good map studying. Yeah, that's far too Oh, it's often very funny. We don't have any influence. Uh. Wow. Well, there we go. Fucking Tom and Ben. Well, if everyone wants to just leave a little vod goblin, like a, a kind message from the pile, just um. Yeah. Give them a thumbs up and say, Kremlin came from space. Kremlin came from <laughs> space. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything mean. These guys seem nice. <laughs> okay. Wild. Kind of kind of love it. Oh. What a crossover. So who's this for? Like, is this something that like the Dutch military are meant to watch? Or is this like for gamers? I don't know, who's the audience for this? Who are they like 
commentating for? Uh, probably more military people, right? Than gamers. Or is it trying to show like that you can be just like a gamer in the military? Oh, up now. is it like, oh, do you play games and you already look at stuff? Well, you could join the military right now. And then just look at real maps instead of game maps. Yeah. Like it's like a recruitment thing. I feel like that it is for recruiting. Social media department sense. of the military. Oh, wow. Oh, God. The amount of people that say, like, Tom and Ben, you got me into Warhammer. Are we going to start, start getting people to be like, Tom and Ben, you got me into the Dutch military. I changed my citizenship <laughs> wow. for Tom and Ben. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Oh wow! Do you want to ref refresh? Refresh the. Uh, <laughs> apparently, people are already commenting. Maybe. I bet they have um, uh, the thing where the moderators have to approve every comment. Approval. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Unless they were like, okay, Kremlo did come from the base. <laughs> That, we do agree. <laughs> Speaking truths, Mahons. Wow. Very, very good. Kremlin came from space, Kremlin came from space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. No idea what you're saying, but thanks for the video. <laughs> also, Kremlin came from space. Uh, <laughs> Love it. Super. Okay, good super job, good. everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Very informative. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Kremlin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, is that mm. the Dutch for <laughs> Kremlin came from space? <laughs> I so. Amazing. Oh. Is it brigading? Well, I it's think it's fine because we're in the video. Yeah, and we specifically said, don't be mean. Yeah. I think that's that's fine, right? I think. I think it's okay. Boost engagement. Hmm. Okay, they might get another um, a person to uh, join. Can we make Who it knows? the most viewed video on Dutch military history? Oh, God, like that. No, no. <laughs> no, we can't. It's the answer. <laughs> the bar is too high. <laughs> yeah. Can it oof. Well, all of those ones are just like shorter adverts. That's true. Wow. wow, there we go. How who who was the researcher that like found that link for them? Do you think and was that the best bit of <laughs> computer game map studying? <laughs> Surely there's people that play like squad or armor yeah. that. Well, I think you definitely don't want to show Hearts of Iron. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think by choosing a completely a game that's completely disassociated from reality yeah okay that makes sense um well i love love that we were the ones that were were chosen <laughs> i just think there's a vod goblin working as like a researcher in wow the, uh, the dutch mod oh my god we just outed them <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> they just sat there sweating <laughs> They have a Kremlo badge on, and no one knew oh, what it meant. No, they're slowly <laughs> unpinning their Kremlo badge and sliding it into their pocket. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Wild. Okay. Well, I guess we have done our first week of what's new in <laughs> the Dutch military this week. I can't wait to find out what happens next time. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they react to this video. <laughs> And it just goes on forever. <laughs> then we react to them. Yeah, yeah. And oh, we just keep going back and forwards. Amazing. But we're going to have to keep upping the ante every time. It's going to escalate. We're either going to become best friends Ooh. or worst enemies. Okay. It's, but I think it's bad for Tom and Ben, <laughs> who have little plastic toy soldiers, to uh, become worst enemies of actual <laughs> military soldiers that clearly have the backing of... A government. <laughs> a government. Uh, I don't think that we're winning that that battle. Um, ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm sure, it'll be fine. Now, Keith. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, right, what's, what's new in Warhammer? Not real wars, pretend wars. Uh, not a lot. No, oh, rumor engine. A hand? A hand. Whose hand? Oh. That's a hard hand to place because it's not like a human skin, but it's also not like an orc um, bracelet. It looks a bit blood bowl -y. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. They did do rules mm. uh, for a giant in Blood Bowl. Oh. Maybe. Because if you look at, I mean, this is always a really hard thing to judge. Oh, the crute. You look at the size, that's not a crew hand. You look at the size of um, the brush strokes. Yeah. And that makes me think this is bigger than a regular human hand. Yeah, 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 I think so. But I think like the look of the arm, like it could be, Blood Bowl, could be, um, what am I call it? Two thumbs. Oh, do you think that's a thumb? Maybe got like a... But it could be the just the little finger doing like a grab, a grabo. What do crew hands look like? Crew hands. I thought they were like chicken, chicken claws. Uh, double double thumbed baby. Are they double, double thumb. Are they two thumbers? Yeah. And they were three fingers, two thumbs. Is that their deal? Do they have nipples? Like that. Oh, okay. So they got four. Four grabbers. Well, it could be that. Yeah, maybe it is. I think it might three. be a weird pose. There might be another finger behind that you can't see. But the claw, normally they have like talons, don't they? Crute normally yeah, have like sharper claws. But maybe this guy's a real trim croot. Mm. Maybe. Because I suppose they do have like leather, leathery bits, don't they? Oh, God. Is this a new thing with Reddit where you can't zoom in on images? Oh, I hate maybe. it. I hate how Reddit does images now. Uh, okay, yeah, well, maybe it is a crew then. I could easily be wrong. Because they have a lot of, like, wrist bangles. I'm just so used to them not having, like, manicured fingers. I don't <laughs> think it's crew. I'm going to say that. No, does Mike... Control and scroll wheel don't zoom in. That's what I was complaining about. Oh, they do. Oh, I didn't at home. But it'll make, oh, wow, you get like. Oh, it does that It thing. does that instead. Why does it do that? Fucking hell. It must have like a plug-in at home or something that makes that not work. Right. Uh, well, what else is new? What else is new? Um, oh, sad times for Space Marines, Tom. It's not like anyone's buying these now, anyway. Some of these. I think a lot of, like, I'm going to, so a whole bunch of old Space Marine models are going, uh, they're not going to make them anymore, they're not going to update the rules anymore, they're just fucking dead. And for some of it, I totally agree. And some of them, I think, they've, they're way too mainstream. So, like, all of these are going forever. And I'm really surprised that the Assault Squad is going. That felt like a staple. Um, and bikes and land speeders, I get a bit more because there are now Primaris versions of those. Yeah, like the Primaris bikes. Is there a Primaris land speeder? Yeah, the uh, Brother Tinnitus is in it. They're huge. Oh. Uh, They're like mega land speeders. Uh, oh, look how cobwebby that thing is. Oh. Interesting. Very webby. Uh, so if you've got like a Ravenwing army or a White Scars army, just fuck you. Your army doesn't have rules anymore. Yeah. It's not legal. Wow, God, I didn't really even remember. Yeah, no one ever used them. I'm not surprised they're gone. Bike squads. I don't even really recognize that model. Oh, uh, okay, though. Painted like that, I do. It's just I've never seen like that. Hmm. I don't know. This feels like a real rug pull. Because they just released rules for all this shit. And now they're going, nope, not anymore. Like, just do it, pull the band aid off at the same time. They brought out the index book, and the, a few units were gone from that. Like, um, Contempt of Dreadnoughts, and I can't remember. There was like five or six things that they got rid of when they did the 10th edition update. Did you get index cards for yep, this? These all have index cards. Yeah, fuck. What a, why? So, there are people out there who will have bought 
some of this stuff between, you know, 10th edition launching and, and today. Shit. I think they've also kind of fucked up because I bet, you know, they did the Tyranid release preview after Mudworld got eaten. Yeah. And they might have done the Space Marine reveal if the Marines had won. I bet there's a new Primaris assault squad and a new Primaris scout unit. And then people wouldn't be so upset that these are getting rid of because there's a new version that you can count your old ones as. Right, okay, sure. But they haven't previewed it yet. So now it just feels like, fuck me, I guess. I've got I've got like 25 scouts and two land speeder storms. Wow. Like they're just, they're not a thing anymore. Mm. Fuck me. Can you just count it as a a ATV? Sure, my, my reconnaissance transport with light infantry now counts as a dune buggy. <laughs> as a Mario Kart. <laughs> I mean, I'll take that over a real Mario Kart any day of the week. Yeah. Uh, um. I don't know. Like, they need they need to purge some of the old Space Marines. They do. They need but... to. And the sooner they do this, and the sooner we stop talking about Primaris, and suddenly there are just Space Marines. Mm-hmm. Everything will be right with the world again. But that's why I'm saying they should have just done it all in one go. Yeah, yeah. By doing it step by step, I think they're just ups continuously upsetting people. Uh, okay, yeah. Every step of the way. Also, there's a bit in here where they're like, but don't worry, tactical marines are safe, and so are devastators. Totally safe. Yeah, but like... <sighs> just get not. rid of them all. Clearly not. Like, give it another year or two. If yeah. assault marines and scouts aren't safe then fucking no one's safe. <gasps> hmm. I don't know. I'd be very wary about buying any other Firstborn at this rate. I'd like to know how many people are buying Firstborn stuff. Hmm. Well, this is purely... I bet this is based on sales. Like, they aren't going to discontinue something that's still selling. Yeah. Also, isn't, like, the uh, Tactical Marine... Box. Isn't that like their highest selling thing ever, 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 ever? Yeah, I mean... The single kit. Because it hasn't changed for 20 years. But I'm sure I heard a stat somewhere that that box, that Tactical Marine box, mm. uh, that kit alone was outselling all of Warhammer Fantasy while it was in 8th edition. I wouldn't be surprised. The like, fantasy was going down the tubes, and tactical squads have always been big. I'd wonder how well it's doing now. Like, Probably n nowhere near as well, just because people aren't going to be buying. Do you want little space marines, or do you want big Chad space marines? Big Chad space marines. <laughs> I want to be held on those big, strong arms. <laughs> yeah. Not little, weird firstborn arms. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know they gotta they gotta trim the range. Yeah. There's um there are over 120 different fucking data sheets for space. It's too many. She's just too many. It's too many. Oh. Mm, I don't know. <clears throat> Legends is just a weird one. Like it makes people feel like they can't play with them. Do you know what I mean? Even though you can, there's rules. Yeah. I think it would be better if you just let people use them. But just make sure they aren't the fucking best thing ever. Well, I think just realistically, the way this will all pan out, you know, having it as legends, the people that want to use these models will continue to use them because they are not caring as much about... Is I don't it... know if that's true. I feel like in most gaming clubs I've seen people play at, bear in mind, I haven't played 40k in a club for... I don't know, 10 years or more. But every time I see other people playing it, even if they don't go to tournaments, everyone plays tournament standard. Mm. I've never seen anyone using any kind of legends or stuff that wouldn't be legal in a tournament. That's kind of like, if you're going to use it, something that can't be used at a tournament for whatever reason, be it a Forge World thing or a Legends thing or a weird special character or a White Dwarf fucking uh, weird army, like you always have to like ask your opponent's permission first, which you're not. Oh, do for sure. For like a pick but no, that's game. kind of sort of like where I was um, going to go. The I think people with all of these out-of-date models, mm. uh, old stuff that you know just 
times have moved on, they don't exist anymore. Uh, they will still play with those. If you are obsessed with these, you'll find a way, you'll play your floppy games, you'll do your... Yeah. Or you'll count uh, them as something else. Thematic things. Or yeah, you just count them as mm. Primaris or whatever. Like, I don't think you can expect them to keep all of this stuff up to date. And especially just because the game changes and evolves. Mm. Like, it can't work in the way that, like, Magic would, where... Oh god, yeah, every... They can say, like, these years. cards, you can play them in mm. this game mode. These cards play in this game mode. Because fundamentally, that game is the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's never hard change too much mm. uh, compared to, well, th this edition and last edition, and then, you know, go back another edition. Like, you can't have, like, the just complete stat lines are mm. different these days. And being like, oh, I want them to keep updating my Chaos Androids because <laughs> I've got loads of those, like. Yeah. It feels weird, though, like this thing. Like, this thing came out after I stopped playing 40K. So this still feels new to me. Oh, I like his little um, little legs. Yeah, it's like a, one of those tr trucks with a crane on it. Yeah, it's pretty cute. I like all the little details. But like this is this, is, as far as I'm concerned, is a new model. You know, I don't even think I know this one. God, there's like some more stuff on here that. So it feels weird that it's like now fucking ancient and not ever going to be sold anymore. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Can built, be built with different guns, apparently. But. Mm. Well, fuck it. I don't okay. care. Space Marines, boring. <laughs> oh, this guy. oh, there's less Space Marines. These guys are cool. I fucking love this guy. These guys are cool. Okay, I take it back. Some Space Marines cool because he's got a lot of extra bits. <laughs> yeah, he's got. He's got a fucking Doctor Octopus with mega armor on. But it's many because he's got his Tom and Ben's and with he's got, it. He's got a whole mob of Tom and Ben's. Uh, you know, that's it. They they can't have these guys anymore. They're done. New new Chad Tech Marine doesn't have Tom and Ben's. He's too cool. Shit. That makes me sad. I like Clampo. <laughs> yeah. Like with his fiddler, fiddler clamps. He's, he's got definitely a little the one, one to be, the isn't he? Big one. Like this guy with fucking tentacle arm. He's having a bad time. Flux, but he's got a saw, so mm. pretty good. But he's not doing great at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this socket's for. Mm. Plug the dinner pipe in. Nutri hose. Mm. I'm gonna miss this guy the most. I think he's, he's just cool. a cool model. I guess you can just use him as the Primaris one. Yeah, just put him on a Kragnos rock and he'll be fine. Yeah, chop one of these off. Stick a whatever he's got, like a heavy bolter or whatever it is. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Just some kind of big gun. He's alright. Hmm. Anywho. Less Space Marines. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, speaking of old things going away forever, here's some old things coming back. Nice. Um, old World. There are some old models. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to be sold the same models for twice the price. Yeah. It's going to be so good. That feels bad. Like those slayers, Jesus Christ. I really thought they would have just put the fire keepers or whatever they're called, the fire kin, the the slayer army from... Yeah, well, you know, nostalgia. Stick those on square bases. Yeah, that's true. It is just selling to nostalgia. And you know what? It's fucking working because I'm going to buy a bunch. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. I am going to buy some of these... What are you most excited for? Uh, I really want to get some of these boars because I want to convert them into squid hog riders. Ooh. Because nice. I want cyborgs. Because ah, cyborgs are cool. Cyborgs are cool. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to like, see, see what it's looking like, but I want to dig out my old gobbos and gobbo around a bit because mm -hmm. uh, it just would be fun. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... I've got a Skaven army, so I'll try the game out with my Skaven that I've already done. Mm. And if the game is fun and there's some cool new models, I might do a Kemri army. Mm. The boys... Well, I did do a Kemri army when they first came out 20 years ago. I sold it. And I'd like to do it gooder now because it wasn't wasn't a great-looking army. Yeah, like Kemri's. Kemri's are very cool. Um, 
I think just seeing, seeing what they bring out, what it's looking like. Um, I like the sound of this, like push and pull. You know, when you lose combat, you get like pushed back, like in Warmaster. Sounds better than just break and run and run break, down. run, run down. Like, <laughs> <"Oop>, that's <laughs> yeah. my buttons. Um, play Dogs of War. I'd love to have a Dogs of War army. Mm. And Camry versus Dogs of War, great matchup. It's always fun when your matchup makes sense, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, just a proper flat static grass. <laughs> oh, it doesn't look great. And those old plastic hills. <laughs> yeah. The fort. Oh, man. Like, that's the kind of board I want to play on. Well, there should be one wood with, like, the three scatter trees on it in the middle. <laughs> yeah. uh, just... Oh. Although having no, um, no movement trays makes me feel weird. That is gross. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of perverts. <laughs> For shame. Uh, wow, God. Do you remember that old board game with spring-loaded catapults and ballistas? I do. Crossbows yeah, and catapults. Crossbows and catapults. I bought a modern version of it to play with my boy called... Um, oh, fuck, what was it called? Like a modern version. Uh, ri rifles and railguns. <laughs> no, it was still catapults. Catapult feud. That was the one. Catapult feud. So I bought that and have played it with my boy a whole bunch. Wow, it looks like a mobile game. Yeah, I hate the artwork because it really is like an artwork. Well, I guess um, neither of the people are like. They're not screaming at least. Shouting. So. Um. Oh my god! There's one of the catapults a dragon. That's an expansion. I didn't oh, buy. Uh, but, you know, it's like, you know, you build a little castle and you have your Monty Python Frenchmen going... Love it. And you, um, you, you pling them with the catapult. That's cool. It's really fun. Took me right back. Because the old, car the original goes for an absolute fortune. It is so expensive. Yeah, good fun. They have to, like, put sheets and pillows under your uh, sofas. Cause oh, because those... Those little rubber balls, they are they are getting stuck under your sofa every single time. Yeah, holy shit. You gotta watch out for that. Oof. <laughs> Anywho. Um, did you read this? Is there anything in here? Reading? No, it's not what we do here, is it? Pay me to lead. Yeah, they've toned down magic. Sounds good. Which I like. I don't want it as toned down as how psychic stuff is. Yeah. It's one of my only complaints about 10th edition is psychers feel real lame. It's just a gun. Yeah. Or sometimes like a reroll or something. Yeah. Or in the case of the, like, Gene Steel Magus, it's just nothing. <laughs> it's just nothing. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Sad times. So I didn't want there to be a magic phase. Like, I like yeah. the pool of dice, rolling that. When they first transitioned away from cards into the dice pools, that was one of the best changes they ever made to Warhammer Fantasy. It was great. It was really, really good. I like that little mini game of like, okay, you've got five dice, I've, you've got five power dice, I've got like two dispel dice. I'm going to, you're going to try and tease out my defenses, but I'm going to hold them until the spell I really care about. Yeah. Um, that worked. It was a little mini game and it was, didn't take too long, but there was enough thinking involved to like keep it interesting. It was just a lot of, a lot of fun. Real good. Uh, it sounds like they're getting rid of that. Mm. Focus has shifted from keeping track of dice pools or cards into the positioning of wizards. Mm. Who knows? Could be good. We shall see. Could but be I can't wait to actually just see it rather than this five year. <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long time. It's been a real long time. A long time getting here. Uh, a trio of tiny tanks. Tiny tanks. That guy. Bane blades. Bane blades. Show me a shadow sword. Do they have shadow swords in the Horus yeah, Heresy? Yeah, they do. I think they do. Anyway, I I like a bane blade, but I love a shadow sword. Uh, I like the little like fancy trim these guys have got. Uh, I hate that because you got to paint it. Oh, I'm not painting that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I kind of love and hate the, this level of detail where, like, this one's got a hunter killer missile, this one's got a havoc launcher. Like, if that is reflected in the rules, I'm, I'm going to scream. I am, <laughs> like, this is something I'm genuinely worried about. Like, yeah. At epic scale, I do not need to worry about which of my rhinos has got two storm bolters and which have got one. But, like, and looking at, like, is that a multi-melter or a fucking flamer on my Dreadnought? Oh, Like, wait. it doesn't matter. Do you have the, dr the drill fist or regular <laughs> fist? Like, <laughs> I do not want that. No. I don't want that level of information. Not one that bit. Minutia in a grand scale battle. Yeah. That's sounds ridiculous. Like, what else are we going to keep track of? Like, do we have to worry about which sergeant's got a power fist and which one's got a sword? Ugh. It's, like, insane. Which one has... Does your sergeant have a combi weapon there? <laughs> you have to buy that! <laughs> yeah. It doesn't... You know, you've got to roll three sixes in a row for it to matter, uh, but you still got to roll. Ooh. There's some um, data sheets and unit cards in today's article. Really. Oh, fuck. Okay, let's find out. Um, yeah, I love these miniatures, and I love Epic, but I am genuinely concerned that I'm going to hate this game. So I read this article, yeah. and reading it was like, huh, this sounds a lot like Titanicus. And I did not like Titanicus. I hate the make all your hidden orders and then play. Mm. Um, that just feels bad. It also sounds exactly like second edition Epic. Mm. And I played a lot of second edition Epic, and then the moment I played literally any, any other version of Epic, I never went back. Ooh. It is like a proper 80s rule set. Ugh. that I am not excited to go back to. Um, but then it's all about, um, I guess they're just repackaging that nostalgia, aren't they? Right. And okay. for most people, most sane people, they haven't been playing different versions of Epic for the last 20 years. Sure. They just remember enjoying second edition back in the day, and they're excited to go back to that. Yeah, and buy some little toys. Um, like toys, very pretty. But I think there's, I think they've like lost me unfortunately, and I'm yeah. sad about it. I'm genuinely sad, because it looks so fucking cool. Yeah, I am hard, hard pivoting my enthusiasm out of it. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. Like, even the stats are the same. The ranges are a bit different, but... Yeah. And the, oh, do you remember Melee in 2nd Edition? I never played 2nd Ed. Really? I played... Um, Armageddon was my first. Oh, that was your first epic with you. Wow! So when you melee, you roll two d six for you. You pair off the individual combats. Everyone fight like pairs off like in Lord of the Rings, and then you roll two d six and add your close combat factor, and whoever gets the highest just insta kills the other one. Ooh. So when you've got like twelve things charging into ten things, you are like going okay, this one you dice, you dice. Okay, mm, okay, that one's dead. Right, next one. Do, 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 do. It's the most tedious thing ever, and it's really spiky on the dice. Yeah. Because, like, most troops have got a plus one or a plus two. <laughs> oh, God. So, 2d6 plus two against 2d6 plus nothing. That's like a Space Marine fighting a Guardsman in melee. I feel like the Space Marine should smash that Guardsman, but it doesn't take a big swing yeah, for you like to win that dice. Statistics off. on that. Hmm. Um, Yeah, but you, you know, lots of people enjoyed that, and if you're excited and you like that, you fucking go nuts. I'm just sad because I liked it a lot until I didn't. Yeah. Um, I just played played quicker, less fiddly versions of Epic because I feel like when you've got hundreds of models, you don't need that level of detail N at all. No, I don't want that. Like, you may as well just play Apocalypse or something if that's what you're after. I don't know. Let's just play 40k. Yeah. It just sounds like this is going to take forever. I'm not... I'm not in. I'm not in. Hmm. Uh, Mantic Games were planning on making... The future is now, old man. Thing. What are you talking about? This is literally a rule set from the 80s. This is the opposite of the future. <laughs> This is old. This is fucking old ass shit. Game design has come so much further since this rule set was written. <sighs> the past is now. Oh, yeah, young man. Man. <laughs> yeah. Very good. That's that's much more appropriate. Lemon Very good. Pizza apple, lemon pizza pie. Very appropriate. <laughs> 
Uh, well, uh, look, models, models, nice. New models, very nice. Uh, Old rules, very bad. Yeah. So weirdly, a five by four for. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> it just feels kind of Why? out of nowhere. <laughs> Just give us a six by four, you cowards. A six by four, I feel like, is like what well, that's what old gamers like because we've had six by four tables built and we know that's the standard. But actually, I think that's a real kind of hard and unachievable thing for most people to have in their houses. I well, don't mind this game is not is for those people, Ben. It's for people <laughs> big tables. I guess at least it gives you a foot on the side to put like your dice and your books and stuff. It's actually pretty good. Like, I do appreciate the slightly smaller table size because it means yeah. that you don't have to have a little pile of shit on the side of the table <laughs> oh, that you yeah. keep like moving just in case like someone moves into the corner and you're like, oh, fine, I'll move my fucking book over here. How many right? times have you not deep striked into one part oh. of the table because there was a bag of dice there? <laughs> so often. <laughs> That <laughs> genuinely dictates, <laughs> like, game how many, plans. How many times have you rocked up to a battlefield, put your stuff on one side, rolled off to pick table edges and thought, oh, I should pick that table side, it's better, but what? my stuff's already here. 100% <laughs> of the time. <laughs> this happens with us every time we play. Yeah. Where we set up the board, we like just start getting our stuff out, it's like, right, roll off. It's like... <laughs> Well, I'm not fucking moving, are you? <laughs> right. We don't even need to see which side we're on, because just yeah. by pure happenstance, whichever side of the table we were just stood at <laughs> yeah. is where we are deploying, is uh, is the one. Uh, yeah. Someone said, I've never chosen the side of the table I was not on. <laughs> yeah. Who's I fully respect like you. Like, if someone you were up against said, actually, that, that table edge looks better, I, I, want, I want that hell. I'd be like, would you be like, this? That's kind of a dick move. <laughs> You're I, making me move all my stuff. In that situation, I would pick up the hill and hand it to them and just be like, put it wherever the fuck you want. I do not care. I'm sat down now and I'm not planning on moving for a while. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> just concede. <laughs> just concede. Right, right. I'm out. Fuck I'm, you. I surrender. You win. Would you like another game? Yeah, we'd be like a rematch, <laughs> and we're gonna roll off until <laughs> I get to be here. <laughs> God, you could do that. That's kind of like save scumming in like war gaming. Anytime you don't like what's going on, you can just be like, I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I surrender. Right, you play again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what do you do? You're in like a casual... <laughs> they win the dice off to go first. And you're just like, boom, you right. win. I quit. Uh, cool, rematch. <laughs> and you'll be like... I feel like I'm being tricked mm, here. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> uh, God, it is a power play. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Would it I, work? I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> It feels bad, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 18 to 1, one game actually played. <laughs> okay, kind of into that. Well, they, they deploy their whole army and have massively out-deployed you, and they're like, oh, yeah, I didn't, oh, I didn't think about oh, that. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have gone like this. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, you, good game. Yeah, well played. <laughs> uh, rematch? Yeah. How many times do you think you could do that before they stopped letting you do that? I don't know, because, like, I know, like, we've played games before mm. and have played games with other people where, like, if a first turn just goes bonkersly good or bonkersly mm. bad, we'll be like, look, if we start again now, we can easily get a, a full game in. Yeah. Let's just let's just re reset mm. this up. I've done that. And also, when I was playing a lot of Armada and we were practicing for tournaments, um, a friend and I would often play like the first turn or two out of six and then just be like, mm, okay, I think we know where this is going. Yeah, like you can begin um, to... We'd spend 10 minutes just going, okay, well, I would go here, you would go there and just like theory it out mm. and be like, okay, cool, we've learned a lesson here. Let's let's start again Yeah, and actually get something useful out of this, try something different because the point of it was was a practice thing rather than a... Yeah, yeah, because you're trying to learn. But in just like an actual game, like... I'm more, more than happy. Mm. Like, I remember playing games with Ryan in mm. Epic where somehow something would go 
catastrophically wrong on the first turn and be like, okay, well, we'll, we'll go again. Mm. Um, yeah, because like, I think if you're playing with someone you know well and no, neither of you want a completely one-sided stomp one way or the other. Yeah, like, I'm not yeah. going to get anything out of a game where you have literally offer no resistance and I just walk all over. Yeah, it's like guaranteed I'm going to win or lose mm. or... It's very, very yeah, like... it's like a 95% chance and it's just going through the motions. Um, yeah, like, don't want to play that game. Uh, like, I remember it happening a few times when we used to play um, X-Wing against each other. Mm. Because you could massively spike, like, oh, I'm just going to take a pot shot at you on yeah. turn one. You spike you, all take hits. take out 30% they of their army in one shot. Fail all of their dodges. And it's mm. so unlikely to happen. Mm. And you just kill someone who's like, yeah. So we just go again? And now because... it's like, we could try and finish this game, but I've literally lost 30% of my army before we've even made contact. Yeah, which it just isn't really how it's playing, because those games are fast enough and we've played so much. Mm. Uh, we'd rather like play a, play a, just a better yeah. game of it. This is why it's just way better to play with friends who you know what each other are looking for and like, you know, rather than just, because I wouldn't say that at a, like a casual pickup when I hadn't, didn't know the person. Mm. I'd probably see it through to the end because that's, what they're here for. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like you need to gauge, gauge with the person. Hmm. Um, oh, no, not XCOM. Oh, you meant X-Wing. X-Wing. Yeah. The little, little spaceship game. Hmm. <laughs> the Dutch are taking notes. Surrender and restart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that works. <laughs> oh my God, we've just been invaded. <laughs> okay, right, uh, we surrender. <laughs> right, redeploy. Okay, you guys have to go <laughs> yeah, back and we... We go again. Yeah, you caught us off guard there. <laughs> Let's do that yeah, that again. was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. That was such a gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Lame. I didn't know you had paratroopers, all right? So let me just... Yeah, you're I supposed would to have told me that. Yeah, I, didn't I would realize have... they had the paratrooping rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Well... Tiny toys. What else do we have? Oh, this surprised me. I read this today. I read this article. So Dan Ebner, he wrote the final Horus Heresy book. He wrote the Space Marine movie, Ben. Oh my God, he fucking did, didn't he? He wrote everyone's favorite Black Library books and yet somehow also wrote the most trash thing I've ever watched in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know this was going to be a three-parter. This is the first time they've mentioned it as far as I'm aware. Oh. I thought it was a two-parter. Oh, that's how they get you. And now I feel sad. Because okay, this is very, very Wait, mild. Have they confirmed that it's only three parts? Well, good point. <laughs> how long are they gonna drip feed this out? <laughs> they could they could keep it going. They could. Oh, they could. Okay, this is a, the most mild spoiler for the Death of the End part one. Wait, is the Emperor fucking does he die? No, I'm just going to say, like, at what? Because everyone knows the rough story of like the final battle of the Empress Palace, right? Sure. Um, so the point at the which the first book ends is a little bit after um, the bit where the Emperor and his buddies teleport up onto Horus's ship. And wow. That's, and that's like the then there's like two or three chapters after that, and then the book ends. So I, when they said book three, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that like, feels. How much how much story is there left to tell at this point? Like I'm amazed it fits in one more book, let alone two. Um Okay. Isn't that fucking wild? That seems bonkers. So apparently the main event An epilogue. in volume two is gonna be Sanguinius fights Horus. And then in part three it's gonna be the Emperor fights Horus. How much dicking around is there going to be on the vengeful spirit? How many waves of mutants and demons and tentacles coming out of the walls are there going to be? <laughs> like, what? This is... Do you remember how we said The Hobbit was stretching like way too little story over way too many films? Yeah, like butter over too much bread. Like, yeah. This is... There isn't even any butter at this point. <laughs> this is just bread that's been spat on, right? <laughs> It's, how do you stretch that out? It's like, it's like, it's just, you have one sheet of toilet paper <laughs> to clean up this much shit. 
just doesn't you're just spreading it too thin wow like there are other stories going on obviously we've got to find out what happens to the never dies and we've got to find out what happens to some other people um great <laughs> but holy wow. fucking shit Oof. I actually really enjoyed the first book. It sounds like I'm ragging on I am ragging on it. But that, The Death in the End is actually one of the best Horus Heresy books I've read. Okay. It was really good. I just cannot imagine. It's a pretty low bar. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that bird shit was one of the best bits of shit I've had on my face. Like, well, yeah, that great No, I wouldn't even things. call it that. Like, I just genuinely enjoyed that. It was a good book. And it was about stuff I was interested in. Which is, I think... Part of the problem with so many of the Horus Heresy books is they really shy away from the stuff you actually, or the stuff I actually want to hear about. Like they barely, the Primarchs aren't really characters, they're barely in it. They're like very much like in the background and you've got these like pleb space marines who are just boring as fuck as the main characters. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Death in the End has loads of people I remember and know doing cool stuff. It's kind of like, you know, the Infinity War Okay, of the Black bring Library. all of the, the, the cool boys. Everyone's favourite cool boys come back and have a cool moment, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe he's done a great job and they're both great books. And they're all three of them will be great. I just Feels bonkers. It feels insane. I just, I just can't imagine a way they're not padded up to the gills with, with bullshit I don't care about. Yeah... It just feels like a scam. <laughs> it does. It just feels like a scam. <laughs> uh. Like, as if they had announced that it was three books at the very beginning, people mm. would have been a bit like, what? Keeping it as a secret, because I bet they didn't even know it was going to be three books. They were like, Dan, can we get two more books out of this? And he's like, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm, definitely not. It'll be too padded. And they're like, what if? What about more money, though? And he was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> "Well, like, I guess we could put a few more filler chapters in. <laughs> Just thumb in more characters. I guess these never die is going to be around a little bit longer." <laughs> yeah, it's like when all those young adult um, books got turned into movies, and then the last part is the always last book is always two films. Yeah, because money. <laughs> money and people have to know how it finishes because yeah. they've already fucking sunken cost fallacy their way through this whole yeah. giant mess. You've already got through three or four Hunger so, Games, however many there were. Great. Get a bit get a bit extra. But you remember the Hunger Games? My God. that Splitting that book into two films was almost unbearable. Most of the first part of that film was her hanging around in a bunker being passed letters from and people telling her that Philip Seymour Hoffman told wrote this because he was dead. Oh yeah, because he had died and then he wasn't in it, and so it was just it was just people going, "Philip, what did you to know this?" Here you go. <laughs> yeah, um, it was just really boring. Yeah, I don't really remember the end of that. I don't really remember the last two films. Um, Shoot an arrow. And they kill the president. Not the president. She doesn't kill the president. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> she kills the other person and it's like, I'm the president now. <laughs> but I don't think she even did that. God, I, can't remember. I don't know. Was Cake Boy still alive? He was like brainwashed and held hostage. But then did, through the power of Cake, did he free himself? <laughs> yeah, he'd spent years practicing anti-brainwashing Cake. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, mm, the deliciousness of Cake has brought me back to the good guy. Yeah. Yum, I love Cake. <laughs> oh. Right. Okay. Yeah, something. I'm pretty sure that's roughly how it went down. Something along those lines. Yeah. Did you see the trailer for the new Hunger Games? There's a new Hunger Games? Yeah, it's a prequel. What if President Snow was young and sexy? And is he in the Hunger Games? He's like inventing the Hunger Games. Okay. And everything's got like a weird like 1930s retro future aesthetic. Ooh. Because it's like 50 years before the Hunger Games. So okay, it's like old-timey Hunger Games. 
And instead of it being on a big screen with hologram monsters, it's just in a ruined hall with 15 kids stabbing each other. <laughs> like, it's, it's just real... So it's just a bit more like Battle Royale. It's a bit more like Battle Royale, but it's about, like, him sort of maybe being good, maybe being bad, and getting, like, his heart broken. Oh. And it actually looks not bad. Like, the trailer it looked cool. Okay. Hmm. But, Does yeah. anyone use cake powers? God, I hope so. It does, is that when they... Do they establish the cake meta right <laughs> at the beginning? <laughs> no, because surely Cake Boy invented the cake meta. That's why no one was... That's the only reason it worked, right? No, it's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so strong. Uh, nothing says morally confi conflicted than making a bunch of kids murder each other. <laughs> yeah, but you make them murder each other for peace. For peace, yeah. Think of all the lives... I mean, really, we saved more lives than we murdered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really like a modern-day Oppenheimer. <laughs> it's like a modern-day Oppenheimer. <laughs> Fuck. Wow. <sighs> uh, so, what else is going on? Uh, oh, little little stats for every different gun. Too many. Too many different guns. God, and each one has different special rules. That is a lot of detail for this kind of scale. Um, is oh, okay, good. The Terminators have one one stat line. Uh, okay, that's good. It's not like, oh, heavy flamer, assault cannon. Right, I, nice. Okay, that I can handle that. Unless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, geez, armies are going to be really big, though. Because, like, four stands of Terminators is 50 points. And 15 points for two more stands of Terminators. Wow. They want you to play 3,000-point games. But are you splashing in your Titans with the existing, like, Titan points? I, uh, they, no, it's going to be different rules to Titanicus, apparently. Okay. But, I mean, obviously, Titans will be hundreds of points. But if you don't take any Titans, you can have a fucking lot of Terminators. A lot of boys. I mean, eight stands for 80 points. You, I mean, how many Terminators can you field in a 3,000 point game? Three hundred and Three hundred stands of Terminators? Three hundred stands. Which is 1,500 Terminators? That's a lot of Terminators. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of fucking Terminators, man. Yeah. A chapter and a half of wow. fucking Terminators. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Fucking hell. That's a lot of boys. Okay. Yeah, and they just fucking deep strike them all in. Swarm wave assault with Terminators. Okay, because that's a, a strat. It's the one option, isn't it? Wild. <laughs> God, everything is so cheap. Even these fucking heavy tanks are like 70 points each. And you get massive discounts by going getting more of them in a squadron. Like six of them is only 350 points. Okay. I kind of don't hate that. That's too many fucking guns. <laughs> why, why are there different rules for hull-mounted heavy bolters and sponson-mounted heavy bolters? Like, fuck! Wait, but they're the same. One, oh, arc front light point of that. Yeah, they're literally the same! I thought one of them would have a different keyword or something. What? <laughs> sure. Oh. They have different fire arcs. No, they don't. They don't have different fire arcs. They both arc front. Awful. <laughs> Jeez. Fucking hell. All right. Well, we'll see. 
We'll fucking see, won't we? We'll see. Um, right, that's all of the Warhammer news. Hooray! Um, that means it's time for Outside of the Box. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to be new in Vietnam two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. I've, God, I think we saw it. There's something boring. Um, uh, unlike all the other weeks. No, there's <laughs> been some good stuff. Um, what did I say? A boat. I think I said a boat last time. Okay. I'm going to say um, normal fucking boring soldier that mm. you would assume would already exist but hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think you're onto a winner there. <laughs> right. Um... Do you like Bear Man? Lydia suggested screaming children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. She really just went for it. Just went for She specifically said, you know that one famous Vietnam picture of the naked oh, screaming fuck, child? Yes. She was like that. <laughs> fuck. Like, You're coming in hard there, man. Uh, coming in hard, Lids. <laughs> Jeez. Obviously, that was already the first thing they made. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's your open. Uh, <laughs> That's your, you know, Kickstarter exclusive. Fuck. <laughs> uh, there's a butterfly robot. Oh, that's cute. Oh, War Games Atlantic Rough Riders. Yeah. You've got... That's cool. I've got those guys. Those guys. Is the little skirt optional? Can I just not glue that on? I would hope so. Because I don't love that bit. But other than that, they're pretty cool. And you could always use the legs for like motorbike guys or something if you wanted. Be pretty good. Pretty sweet. Uh, do you want some Ottoman flags? Oh, I've already got enough, to be honest. Okay, well, there's more if you oh, need I like some. Their little like slippers. Very cool. Very fancy boys. Uh, there's an orc. Oh yeah, orc bike. Don't they think I've already got an orc biker? Oh, no, yeah. Artel does, not Puppet Swar. All right, sport for choice now. Very, very pretty. This guy again? We've seen him. Ten parts. How? I don't even have ten parts. <laughs> like, He's two cute. arms, torso, the legs, both pistols. Head. Head. Base. Base. Is the base topper a separate <laughs> bit? <laughs> yeah. And uh, maybe the sword is separate oh, as well. Jeez. Cigar, it's his own bit. The cigar, oh it's own it better bit. not God. be. Jeez. I mean, it's a very cool concept. But it's, it has too many bits. Uh, oh, Amogus's. It's Amogus's. Martian Wars. Okay. That's, that's weird. I kind of love the idea of this. Do you want to... Uh, play space space men wars. I'll play space men wars. Can we paint them as Amoguses? <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, That'd be really easy to spray them like light grey and then contrast. And they're done. Would love that horror bit as well. They do. What is this game called? Uh, space horror. Space That's horror. probably. Nope. This is a whole different thing. Wait, is this a different space horror? Oh, it's like aliens. Yeah. Go back a page. Get outside the box. What was it called? Luna. Luna. Where is... The let's fly away in space. Oh, God. That whole conversation is just going to upset... Upset you. you Our mean? games. I don't... Luna starter set. I mean, the bullet... Bullets would be pretty effective in space because they wouldn't drop, right? They... They'd keep no, they'd be Lydia very was accurate. explaining it to us, and that's not how they work. No? Because there's no gravity. Yeah. When you fire it, it just floats off. <laughs> like a fucking balloon. <laughs> I, like, I never was good at science, <laughs> and so I couldn't quite understand. <laughs> right. But because there wasn't gravity to pull it down, it yeah. means that... Yeah, floats away. Mm -hmm. Would you... They just float out of the gun. I imagine shooting in space without magnetic boots on would lead to a lot of, like, you floating away. Spinning. Yeah, loads of spinning. Could you, like, fire it 
the other direction to like counteract your spin? Or do you get a gun that shoots in like both directions at once? Oh god, that sounds fucking hard. You have it on like your shoulder, like a Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> like a bazooka. <laughs> and it just fires exactly like synchronized and you just like, like stay where you are. But then there's no oxygen to like ignite the gunpowder, right? Would you need like a little compressed See, oxygen? this is the question I was asking. Because yeah. in Serenity, they literally, or Firefly, they literally mm. had um, uh, some of the pistols. Malcolm Reynolds' pistol mm. had a special case that went around it oh. that let it fire in no atmosphere. Okay. Whereas there's another part where they're like, oh, shit, we got to fire our big gun. Yeah. But that can't it. fire in space. And so they yeah. put it inside a space suit. Oh. And fire it out. Okay, but then the first time you shoot, yeah, break yeah, the space they, but they only need one shot. Oh, They're okay. Like, um, oh, so they sort of like muzzle it in a suit. Basically, okay, that's interesting. Uh, and so I don't know how it works. Oh. Um, I'm sure everyone in chat has already angrily um, explained yeah. how it works. Modern propellants have their own oxygen in the chemistry. Oh, okay. You just mix in a bit of like oxygenated gunpowder. Maybe you just don't need that much oxygen, I guess. Yes. Mm. Uh, this looks cool. Like I generally really like the idea of it. Wow, they look fun. But it's like fifty quid, and you get six six modules. That's very expensive in like a deck of cards. I mean, the terrain's pretty easy, right? <laughs> Gray <laughs> mat, just moon, moon board, or <laughs> what? Just nothing. We just have to stand there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Actually, when I went to Salute, the big war games show, a couple of months back, someone had made an asteroid combat game, and they had like six asteroids about this big that they'd like put on big stilts, and painted, you know, with a black backdrop and stuff. And there was like a magnetic lining inside the whole asteroid, and all the models had magnets in the base, so you could like go underneath the asteroid and move around. I love it. And you would shoot at people, and you'd get cover by like, okay, I'll go on the side of my asteroid, so now you can't see me from your asteroid and everyone's got a jetpack and they can like hop around and it's this three dimensional is a like, really cool game. idea it looked great like maybe i can find a picture um salute 3d asteroid miniatures game like someone had just like obviously made it up um Yeah, it's just like one of the demo games, but I don't know how to how to find it. Fee. Anyone in chat know what it's called? I can't remember the name of it. Gravity Wars is my guess. Shit. Oh, well, you can imagine that. Can you? <laughs> Magnetic. How about I put that in? That's a lot of words. More words is more good, though, right? It gives mm. more Googling. It's more food for Google to eat. Bullets don't float. Is that what it's called? No, I feel like I'm being tricked. <laughs> 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 I feel like that's a mean joke. <laughs> it's pretty good, though. It's pretty good. I do like bullets don't float. Uh... <coughs> You're taking advantage of me and my, my sickness. His weakened state. <laughs> yeah, I nearly fucking typed it in like an idiot. Uh, it, I guess it didn't exist. I must have made it up. It was a fever oh, dream. Just making it up just to sound cool. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, well, I like the idea of yeah. three space guys. You just want to stick one of those, like, um, uh, what's it called? The Arnold Schwarzenegger Mars film. Total Recall. Total Recall, yeah. One of those Total Recall drills into someone, don't you? Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Benny. And uh, drill them up. Mm. Yeah, you drill them, and then they start spinning on the end of your drill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm in. I kind of like the idea. Uh, there's Dwarf oh, Building. Forges, have fun. Do you want some? Brother Vinny does really nice models, but these are a bit like boring and normal. I guess, okay. I guess it's hard to make just, you know, 
I mean, if you want them to be historically accurate, they're not going to be super excited, are they? Super duper wild. And it's oh, I, feel like car. The, I feel like it's armored cars and Anzac every other week. Oh. Are these bigger? <laughs> um... Look kind of weird. Yeah, they do. Uh, all of their their vehicles look great, but their humans always look like mannequins. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And there's no Kickstarter. Like what? Is it because we made too much fun of their horniness? I'm worried that someone higher up found out about how fucking sexy it was, and <laughs> no they were one was like, checking. And, and they were like, <laughs> "What? You're putting out porn? You're <laughs> doing this section to try and sneak some smut out?" <laughs> Oh, how disappointing. Is there another one from, or has it gone forever now? We've got this week's one. I don't know, I've not seen this week yet. Oh, okay, let's, okay, what's new in Vietnam? Anzex. <laughs> I'm gonna have um, reserve infantry who are not fully equipped or dressed properly. That's never going to turn up. <laughs> Not like the Anzacs. <laughs> uh, we've got, got Minotaur. Minotaur. I feel like we saw these before. We have seen these before. It's true. They're kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Rocking Rock Gobbos. Gobbos. They're pretty cool. I like these guys. I like this one a lot. Yeah. He's pretty rad. They're, They're all great. I love them. Very nice. Um, Ooh, traitor guard. They look pretty cool. That flame is fucking huge. They're real big. I'm into it, though. I like the medic's bag of fucking tentacles. That, guard, those leeches. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> yeah. Like evil chaos blood leeches. I don't think you want one of those. No. Oh, these are great. Really nice. Yeah, they're real, real fun. Real snazzy. Uh... World War One man's. Pew pew. We're in a trench. Mm. I've got a bag. I write poetry. <laughs> oh no, he's not running. He's not having a good time, is he? <laughs> no, no one was. Uh, Ooh. carnival. That thing looks. Ooh, oh, Franken uh, horse. That's sort of fun. That's real spooky. Dan, uh, my friend Dan and Chris have recently bought carnivals. And started painting up their gangs. And Dan is making like a bespoke Venice like um, canal board. He's only like halfway through, but it looks fucking great. Yeah, like, like it's quite an easy geometric shape to build. But he's getting his resin ready for like the big pour, and he's got his little ladders and bridges and stuff. Which God sounds really cool. Because mm. I think that's the kind of game where the, the terrain makes or breaks it. Right? It's the setting, which is the reason why you're mainly playing that, right? Just the, uh, it's like just dripping in theme, and you really want the board to look super fucking cool. Yeah, and you need some rooftops to jump over, and yeah, and like little alleyways to be running down. Mm. Um, yeah, hopefully he finishes it. I'll get some pictures. We can show it off. That's really great. Cool. Ooh, uh, a funny looking orc. Some more orcsies. Mm. Very nice. There's. It's like a noise marine. Like a noise marine but with a real happy sure. face. He's very happy, and he's got his ugh, ooh. creeping tentacle. Uh, and oh, fake Doom Rider! Doom Rider. <laughs> it's pretty rad. I'm into it. It's pretty cool. I mean, he's he big on that fit, base. I was going to say, technically fits on the base. He's <laughs> really pushing them. Oh my god, 48 parts. <laughs> I expect nothing less from Artel. Oh my god, it's. It's a lot of bits. Doom Rider. Wow, what a what a sexy boy. It's too sexy. Master of debauchery. Uh, some, some little knights. Some little knights. Oh, that looks like a pantomime horse <laughs> if I ever saw one. <laughs> uh, these guys are cool. Mm. Dystopian Wars. Oh, still doing a thing. Going apparently. Is this that famous Napoleonic farm chateau? La Haye Saint. Looks, oh, no, but it's got a truck in it. Maybe not. It doesn't have the exact layout, but it's close, Ben. Mm. 
And... Oh, oh Anzacs. you're right. It's more Anzacs. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well done. Well, seeing as it's been for the last, like, six weeks, it's been Anzacs. <laughs> yeah. I don't count that as a win. That feels like a yeah. hollow victory at best. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've then... got Kickstarter. <gasps> oh my god! So the after we complained about the horniness, it's been off the air for two weeks. I, I think we've just fucking killed the golden goose. I'm, I'm, I'm upset. How do we take it back? Oh, How do we fix this? Shit, we want it back. Please. Please. Like, we'll put up with the 20 to 30% of uh, <laughs> smut that's in there. That's kind of what made it fun, a little bit of danger. It's what made it better. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly what made it good. Shit, come back, horny editor. We miss you. Please, tabletop fix. We need it. Do they have, like... Because sometimes they do other stuff on just, like... Yeah, we must have given them so much promotion for this website, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like it's net positive. Here, look, they've got a tabletop roundup. It's not, it's not, quite it's not the, same. the same, is it? Is that right, King? Okay, it's cool. There's a solo folk horror RPG, Luddite. Oh. Uh, it's not as fun. Well, because this is actually the good stuff. Oh. Well, when you see it all, I like the... Ooh, the mystery. Yeah, like, you know, looking at the names and yeah. seeing, like, what could it be? What is Ape versus Croco Man? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that kind of thing. It just adds. Adds the excitement of it. Yeah. Can we do our own? How easy is it to, like look at least viewed Kickstarters or something like that. How searchable. Can we just search miniatures and then like sort by least relevant? Ooh, maybe. But again, you get a picture, right? Oh, yeah, that does take away the mystery somewhat. It makes and it already, Ben, the first thing, Succubus Witch. <laughs> it's already over 5,000 things going right now. <laughs> oh my god. You know Maybe, Maybe it wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. <laughs> god, did they literally just go to the site and just be like, right, I type in miniatures every week <laughs> yeah. and I pull the top 25 things <laughs> and I just put that on a list because already. <laughs> oh, yeah, the dead wave too. Get a proper look at that. Um, yeah, because this is already like real high percentage of horniness. <laughs> There's a lot of horniness. Like, we've had, like, a good five or six horny things. <laughs> there they go again! Oh, it's not just them. Okay. It wasn't their fault. If anything, they were protecting us. There's a higher hit ratio. <laughs> <laughs> they actually filtered a lot of it <laughs> out. filtered most of the smut. <laughs> oh, and we may have got them fired. Oh, no. no. Well, no, because they're still publishing the thing. It's still <laughs> fucking... <laughs> it's every third fucking thing. <laughs> There's so much of it. <laughs> That's a whole row of fucking horniness. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. Like, we Who complained knew? about, like, the few crimes they did not stop. <laughs> but we had no idea about yeah. the atrocities that they were blocking from us every oh day. It's like that meme of the soldier, like, over, yeah. over the child. The child has a couple of knives in them, but this guy's <laughs> back is filled with knives. Oh, my God. And we had the audacity to wow. complain. Oh, there's some blood on me. Oh, Gross. <laughs> It's a bit loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we take it all back. We never knew. <laughs> we never knew. <laughs> you were the true hero. God, it's um, so fucking horny. Tabletop fix. We had no idea the sacrifice you made Please. for us. Oh, my God. Fuck. Apparently someone's found the asteroid game. Wait, is there a link or a name for it? What did, how did you find it? Is it called Bullets Don't Float? Um, explain. 
There might still be, still be something. I mean, a lot of these I still I recognize from a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> we have still seen some of these. But yeah, it does it does take out the uh, the whimsy a bit. Yeah. Rise of the Elder Tubbies. Oh, have you ever seen the Elder Tubbies art? No. Oh man, it's it's amazing. Wow, I feel like it wouldn't take much to um someone shared it. Oh yeah, look there it is. Um Inger.com slash A slash X eight P R Y O J. There it is. So you just got like this. It doesn't actually take up that much space, but like you'd need a laser pointer, right? Yeah. For that to work. Look like a fun demo game, though. It's pretty cool. I like the idea. Thanks for finding that. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look at some of these. This can be our Kickstarter roulette for the day. These look a lot like fucking fourth edition undead. Don't they, they really do. Like, honestly, if I didn't know, I'd think this was just a slightly <laughs> converted. Oh, was, there, but there's something like off about their heads. <laughs> the horse head <laughs> looks a bit wacky, and yeah, that guy is that chainmail, especially. Jeez. But yeah, I would guess that these were just like old. Old GW plastic skeletons. Yeah. It's a cool vibe. Oh, loads of stuff. All the bits you'll ever need. Very cool. Oh, and a rude chaos man. Wow. Sir, please. This is a family show. It's a family show. The Snowbreaker. Yeah, like a oh, snow like a snow dwarf piercer. snow piercer. That's fun. I like a dwarf steam train. Oh. Very pretty. Yeah, that's nice. Looks great. Any more secret bits? Some painted ones. There we go. Ooh. That's cool. Oh. It's not launched yet. What are the elder tubbies from? Fill me in. So it's just like this like weird artwork that was done of like there's like a little person, there's the giant telly tubbies. Uh but then as they like they went on and just like did more of this like Ooh, gets a bit dark soulsy. Artwork. Oh god. Nice. In Hoover. Fucking the Jeez. uh Nunu. But then, like the like the sun. Do you remember? There's like the baby's oh, face yeah. in the sun. But then there's the elder tubbies. Oh, oh it's just wow! This really cool artwork. I, I love highly the recommend. style of these drawings. Like I would, I would put one of these on the wall in my office. I think. Yeah, like it's so fucking weird. Sun and the moon. But, God, that's so creepy. Uh, wow. But search it up and give that person some love because it's very, very nice. Yeah, that looks amazing. Um, yeah, I remember seeing these like ages ago. And, just loved it. It was such a cool style. Uh, pow. Right, well, we need to go on a break. Mm. But we'll be back very soon. We'll be reading out your messages. We'll be playing some FTL. FTL. And uh, just having having some fun. Awesome. Can't Stay wait. Stay tuned. We'll see you, see you in a minute. Team 5. Bye. <laughs> Ben, ba ba ben, ba 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 ben. Tom, 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 tom. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's Tom and Ben. It's all Tom and Ben. Yeah, we're gonna play some FTL. We got loads of new ships unlocked. I don't know what you're in the mood for today. Uh, wasn't there a Mantis four-man boarding ship? There surely is. How do you feel about that? Let's have a look. What does it do? It gets um, better drones. And... 
increase his movement speed by 33% and give them mobility cooldowns. Do these guys have abilities? Wow. Oh, yeah, this guy does. He can in temporarily increase his combat, but increases environmental damage. Okay. What is the manager? What's this? Interface with... Oh, it's like a crewman. Oh. Zero power. Mm. Okay, so he can, like, drive the ship while yeah. everyone else is ripping the enemy to shreds. Okay, this is interesting. We're going to get fucked against um, drones, but, you know, like um, auto ships. Yeah. But it could be really fun. Uh, What else do we have? Is that who we drove last time? That one's got a chain laser. Chain laser always good. Mm. Uh, this is all energy ship. boys. I don't know. We had a lot of stress with energy boys last time. That's true. Oh, this is um, Devorak with his soup. Oh, yeah. He's the super Zoltan man. Uh, he gives two power bars and is amazing at everything. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. Mm. Or do you want to board? Um, I feel like we know where we're at with boarding. Discus Mortis. Discus Mortis. Death to discs. Okay. Do we to start or do you want to start? Uh, I could do a start. Why we not? Do a start. Um. <clears throat> not a crew member, obviously. Uh, yeah, because they can board with us, or they could be the pilot. Yeah, they're just a normal human. These guys all need names. Yeah, they do. So the special mantis. Special Mantis, that can be Black Sheep. Welcome on board, Black Sheep. They actually do double combat damage, which is huge, because the Mantis normally does like 20% more. Ooh. And takes 80% damage from combat. Ooh. They're a killer, Black Sheep. What else we got? Uh, Inquisitor Bot Ben's minion. Good luck squeezing that in. Inquisi Bot. Inquisi Bot, love it. Um, and Zoe. Look on board, you're a mentoid. And Krupkink Eldrian. You're the normal human. But still a valued member of the crew. Until, you know, you die. Until we have to pick someone to die. <laughs> yeah, which... <laughs> I'm not going to say it's definitely you. It's not, not going to be Black Sheep, is it? Let's mm. be honest. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Right. I guess we're ready to rock and roll. Distress call? I don't want stores. It's too early for stores. You want stores, Ben? We got stores! Uh, go to the distress store, because you can always just like yeah, go through all the supplies, right. maybe. Uh, rescue the merchant. Uh, do nothing. Okay, we're getting shot by a laser and a laser. Um, okay. uh, I think the trick is just auto-board. Let's turn manager bot on. Who will? I guess they can't get experience. We we'll put them on shields anyway. Uh, oh, they're cool. They look like a, a bit like a scutter. Oh, they are like a scutter. I love that. Um, well, let's just see what happens. I guess. Can we go? Weird that you didn't just throw them all in one room. I forgot we had oh, so many guys. Oh, uh, but now we get to rip one of them to shreds with a double team. Okay, I like that. Actually, that. works pretty well. Okay. Oh no, not our weapons. Guns offline. And we oh, <laughs> they only have two guys! Um, I don't think we've got enough money for anything unless we want to sell. I don't think we do want to sell any. We could sell the drone booster. Uh, uh, I don't know. It'd be handy could, if we get a boarding drone, wouldn't it? I think we can hold out for a little bit. Yeah, I don't think we're right. Also, I think we want to save money so we can get a uh, better shield soon, because that's going to mm. pay off in the long run. Very true. But also, boarding drone sounds amazing. <gasps> Battle drone. That is a boarding, isn't it? Do you want to sell one of our existing drones? I don't think we need the manager. No, we don't need the manager. He does provide power to the room. Oh. That's be pretty good. We could sell the missiles. <laughs> sell the missile. Do it. 
<laughs> it means we have nothing if, um, <laughs> yeah, if it's an auto ship. We kind of need everything. This is really awkward. Then Maybe we come back for the battle drone? Yeah. Should we try that? We'll have more chance. What's the hotkey for this? R. R to return, and we're not allowed to peek. Mm -mm. Secret. Uh, oh, do you want to send Autobot to repair? Oh, maybe you want the pilot to do it because to do what? Oh, repairing, right? And oh, we've got a we've got a maintenance bot. He can repair. Me, 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 me. He's fast. Me, me. He's real fast. Mm -hmm. I love him. Uh. As so we've got some very generous donations in. Um, this is one from Crook Kink Eldrian. Oh. They say, hi, baby man Tom. And I uh, guess Ben gets Lydia nickname. Oh. So I'll call him Triple B. What What was Lydia's nickname? It was, it was baby man and hot lid. Oh. It turned into a weird porno. Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask about it. Why, why were you called hot lid? I wasn't. What? She was called Hot Lid. I was called Baby Man. Why are you the Baby Man? I that think because she has an adult sense. baby fetish. It was because <laughs> I said I didn't like coffee, and so she was like, he's a baby man. Oh, coffee's gross. You're correct. <laughs> well, it could be Baby baby Tom and Ben. Uh, but then, like a weird uh, like school ground bully she was like come on everyone let's start calling him baby man <laughs> and uh the simps were like yeah yes, notice me lydia uh and so then here we have crook kink El eldrian wow uh and they say 100 exactly how it went <laughs> i'm paraphrasing <laughs> Look, oh, look, I'm here we go. Man. We've got another simp. I'll drink a, I'll drink a tea. <laughs> uh, and they say, I've decided to get some Kremlo art commissioned Ooh. while updating my gaming room. Uh, we'll keep you updated on the process. Still looking for an interesting artist. Mm. Praise Frog. Praise Frog. Well, show us the piece mm. when it's done. Uh, would I'd love, love to, to right-click it. <laughs> some uh, Kremlos. Kremlos. Would you buy a Kremlo NFT? If I, if it's like an actual portrait, physical painting, is that an NFT? Um, it's not fudgeable. So I'd buy one of those, because <laughs> yeah. that's like a one-off yeah. that only one person can own. Yeah, well, it's a new, you might just start a new craze there, Tom, physical NFT. <laughs> oh my God, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I am there and ready. Uh, but yeah, show us your art. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Your it sounds amazing. Uh, Zoe donates three bucks. Hey, Zoe. It's a time and bomb. It is. Did you know that Birmingham mm. uh, is a cannon planet in 40K? Yeah, they first mentioned it, as far as I'm aware, in the Rogue Trader rulebook. Yeah. It mentions it as a, um, it's a planet of infinite darkness <laughs> that knows only eternal night or something like that. I'm pretty sure that's Birmingham. And it's it, like a backwards nowhere land full of idiots. <laughs> yeah, they were not very kind. Well, I think they were. That's nicer than real Birmingham. Wow. Wow. <laughs> they joke. Uh, the Black Planet. A feral world. Uh, five um, to ten million guards on per Terran year. It receives almost no light from its star and is swathed in perpetual darkness. Yeah, that's the one. Basically what I said. Yeah, seems legit. Uh, the Drakari attack it. <coughs> and... I didn't know it was the homeworld of a chapter. That make, That's a bit too cool for Birmingham. Which chapter is it? The, the Harbingers. The ones you've never heard of. You've heard of the Harbingers? Who... Ooh, Ooh. Very jazzy. Ooh. <laughs> well, I guess they've got no light there, so they thought, like, yeah, we're going to paint our guys edgy black. <laughs> I've definitely got black paint here. They're like, yeah, fuck it, slap it on. Did you get painted in the dark? <laughs> Just. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. Uh, chapter Master Nimrod Grudge. <laughs> sure. Okay. There we go. 
Oh shit, I've read that book. Angels of Darkness. I remember them getting mentioned in that. In the Battlefield Gothic rulebook. Ooh, fun. Okay, cool. Grey Knights have purged it. That's fun. Because Skulltaker was there. Wow. Oh. And Cast Castellan Crow weakened him with a vial of the Emperor's Tears. Wah. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, the, uh, yeah, the Emperor's Game of Water. His salty tears. Uh, but Zoe continues to say, uh, the description's incredible. It reminds them a lot of the real place. Ooh. Their other favorites include Sleaf and Carlos McConnell. Crablo came! Ooh. What's Sleaf and Carlos McConnell? Mm. You can search one of them. Uh, Sleaf. Sleaf, Sleaf sounds good. It? Oh. It's a dead world. Strange warp vibrations occur here. Just leave that up to your own imaginations. Okay. That was anticlimactic. Okay. Okay. Uh, Inquisitor Bot Ben's minion donates three bucks. Thank you. They say, Tim and Barn, you two have made me play FTL quite a bit these last few weeks. Ooh. So much. Now I have almost all the ships. Just missing the slug and crystal. Wow, the crystal one's hard to get. So you're basically al almost there. It's like an RNG kind yeah. of thing. Uh, no Warhammer from Bot. Cause still working, waiting on my box naught. Two Ooh. more weeks, hopefully. Uh, praise Bemperer and Kremlo. Huzzah! Thank you. Enjoy. And Black Sheep. Uh, it's 30 bucks. Thank you very much, Black Sheep. Ooh, thank you. Uh, they say, hey there, Black Sheep. You are my, insert name here, favorite chatter. You are my Tom's favorite chatter. Black Sheep is my favorite Tom's chatter. It is great to have you here. Let's see what you have to say. Tom and Ben, <laughs> I just wanted to support you two. My favorite duo, chump me up. Thanks, Black Sheep. We should hang out. Wow, they're having a big chat with themselves there. I think I b b balked it and was supposed to uh, have read it more seamlessly. <laughs> with more uh, sincerity. More sincerity, <laughs> which, God, you've heard my voice that's for not, long enough. You, that's not your deal. It just struggles to, to get any of that in there. Mm. Uh, I tried to say something really nice and sincere um, at Christmas to my family, and they all thought I was taking the piss. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> no, seriously. You guys are you guys are all right. Are you, yeah, you're great. <laughs> oh. And they didn't believe me. They were just like, even when you're trying to sound nice, you sound fucking dripping with sarcasm. Yeah. I've said it, the wind changed and my voice just stayed that way. It's the curse. It is the curse. Uh, uh, let's deploy beep boop drone. They're going to shoot a missile at us. Oh, do you want to use your pheromone? Double damage pheromone. Oh, I was going to charge up. Yeah. Can you kill them? Oh, no. Oh, what? <laughs> Is it Great. not an anti-missile one? Oh, it's in anti-drone mode. <laughs> Shit. Sleeping on the job. Um, what a dingus. What a fucking hell. Okay, how do we configure that? Before the start of the next battle, maybe? Okay. That's annoying. Oh, we got a new missile, though. Let's have a look at that thing. That's going to be sold. Uh, slow charging, two damage missile weapon. No power required. Oh, maybe that's not going to be sold. That's just a free gun. We do have a lot of missiles. It does double damage to systemless rooms. So it's four damage. So actually, if we have to fight down an auto ship, this will be really helpful. Hmm. I feel like we should just be stacking shields and engines. And if we can't fight someone, we legally were allowed to leave. <laughs> yeah, because they're not playing by the rules. Or if you get the uh, maxed out, um, uh, what should I call it? Teleport bay. You can get in and out before you suffocate. That's true. If you up it to level two, then uh, you can um, have a go. 
Um, I don't know how to change. I think before the next battle, you're going to have to like configure that. It's up to you now. Where are we going? What's the sector saw? Oh, there's a button on the top left. I didn't see that. Thank you, chat. Union turf. Mm. What kind of union? Um, yeah. Are we going in as Mantis Strike Breakers? Ooh, that feels bad. What about Atlas? Ugh, that's a lot of reading. Uh, I think we won't learn about Atlas. Contact the god. Hello. Uh, um, outpost. Jeribi has donated 10 bucks. That's the wrong. Thank keyboard. you very much, Jeribi. And you say, Ben, you were missed last week. Feel better soon. Also, two weeks ago, you asked for my Tom design tattoo, but I had already left. So here it is. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Did you draw the zombie or the Simon? I drew the zombie then. Which one do you think I could have drawn? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's cute. Guess. I like your um, your cartoon drawing style. Oh, thank you. You should do more more little little doodles. <laughs> do some more of your little doodles. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. Oh, they've g um, done goofed by teleporting into the med bay. Oh, wow. Where my mantis still were. There you go. I put it in chat. I mean, oh, orange. they have their own mantis. I can be a healthy boy. Oh, no. They've got a med bay. Well. We've got three missiles. Pop our pheromone. Oh. Come on, the orchid joins our crew. Ooh. No. Mm. What about a slug? Because they're psychic. They can see where the enemies are. Sure. Hector. That's actually Jeribi. Uh, love that. You're going to help board. Has he got any cool rules? They have nothing. Mm. Jeribi. Uh, Repairo, something that's broken. Sure, get on it. Nice. Uh, I think I will visit a store soon, but not yet. Uh, prepare to chase them. Mm. Oh. oh, yeah, Tom, on the top left. Up by O2. That's where we changed drone. I've already changed. Oh, did you? I missed that. Sorry. One step ahead of you, baby. Mm. Take a look at the market. Help with the fire. Don't worry about the fire. It's not a big deal. Repair drone. Oh, yeah. Let the drone. Wow, drink. that was good money. Mm. Uh, oh, I just cleared them on. What? We've got the boarding party? Oh. What the fuck just happened there? Okay, well, we'll... Do we want to plant -y? Oh, we've got two boarding drones. Holy shit. We're going to get our drone out of there so that we can fit another Mantis in. Surely four guys can kill two robots. Yeah, they are pulling those robots apart. Yeah, holy shit. We're starting to feel pretty fucking strong. Yeah. It's a four-person med bay as well. Is... Very rare. I've never seen that before. We got a battle drone. Whoa! Okay. Bordo. Amazing. Uh, right. Freaking clankers. Oh. Oh, I didn't even know we didn't have sensors. Maybe we should get some? I will. I want that. I kind of want mind control. Oh, wow. Cloaking's good as well. Yeah. I mean, mind control lets us go all in. Last oh, slot. God. Oh, why? I guess we've already got drones and teleporters. Oh, that's tricky, because if... I want both. Um, 
I don't think I will take either for now. I'll let you choose that later because I think I'd rather just get another shield. Yeah, we do need the shields. That's fair. Uh... Oh, Jeribi. Thank you for giving out all the gift subs. That's very kind. Uh, do we have anything else that we want to sell? We may as well sell the manager, I guess. And we need to repair the O2 as well with the fixie bot. Oh, God. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was broken because it was in darkness before. Yeah, we didn't even have sensors of our own ship, did we? <laughs> uh, God, should we instantly here? Because we'll do it at some point. Um, yeah, may as well do it now. Can I do that? Yeah. Great. We're looking good. Should we configure a battle drone? Uh, battle drone. Boarding mode. Oh. Perfect. Okay, right. We don't need to super. No, we'll only bring him in for emergencies. Yeah, but. Pretty cool. Mm. Uh, they do have a med bay. Are they going to board me? Fuck off. Idiots. All right, we just missile them. Yeah. Okay. Good shit, nerds. Blammo. Get in there. Oh, I guess the slug needs training. Why not? <sighs> this ship is ruthlessly efficient. <laughs> not bad, are they? <laughs> it's R, by the way, to return them. Oh. It's quite handy. We're doing it a lot. May as well use the oh. learn the actual boutons. Uh, so Duraval donated, thank you, and they say bomb ten. Some months ago, I made a sneak peek at my latest project. Since then, a lot of progress has been made. Careful though, unbased model. What? What the fuck? It's not finished then, is it? What are you doing? Oh my god, it's a big lad. Big lad, ahoy! This is a 40k scale Warlord Titan. Holy moly's. Holy moly, this must be a big old job. That's a lot of a lot of miniature. Because I spent a long time building my epic scale one. Uh, first time attaching the legs and torsos and seeing how big it actually is is intimidating. Put him with the rest of the army. Started work on the leg armor. Holy shit, that's a big fella. Yeah, you're doing a nice job though. Very crisp and clean. It's Looking not one you want to fuck up, is it? Looking very good. Like the transfers. Yeah. Are you going to join the Titan Owners Club? Oh, wow, he's got Space Wolf friends. Uh. Oh, and he's look, started doing marbling on the white. Very pretty. Mm. Ow, fuck. God, I mean, I'd be so worried putting this thing together. Like, just gluing the arms in, I'd be like, this, like, what are the chances this arm's just going to fall out? Like, is this and just glue holding it on? Then just explode. And yeah. just shatter into a million trillion pieces. Oh, uh, sorry, wrong mouse. Um, whew, I mean, you've done a great job. Very nice. But I would be very scared. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's a lot of toy. Hey. Ooh, R2 Defender Drone. If they sold a um an Orc Gargant, would you be um would you be tempted? Oh, you're gonna have to vent all that fire, aren't you? Yeah, because they broke the, the droid bay. Fuck There's, um Oh fuck it just <laughs> Open them all. You don't need air. You can shut those specific doors. <laughs> Are you going to get that? Yeah, you're yeah, fine. Yeah, he's got air. That's fine. Poor old repair bot. He can't fix himself. Oh, he can fix everything <laughs> apart from himself, Ben. <laughs> Ironic, really. <laughs> it's not a tale a mantis would tell you. Oh, man, not at all. Right, you can even have some heals. Uh, and can we get a power? Loop. 
Nice. <laughs> You're not meant to. Just... <laughs> Where does Cog go? Don't, don't even worry about it. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Your speciality is not repair. <laughs> it is break. It is it is kill. Uh, how much is three power required? Mm. Shoots down lasers and solid projectiles. Nice. Do we have to do anything? Anti missile. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, a little dinged up. Murphy's donated. Thank you, Murphy. Murphy. They say, hey, guys. Murphy. You may remember saying picked up some cheap riptides after I decided to get back into the hobby. Here's my paint test. Uh, chromatic paint. Look. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Is that the one that sort of changed as the light? Yeah. Changes? Nice. Lewis has done some Wraith Lords with something similar. In the that's office. true. That is true. He did uh, Wraith Lords. Very cool. He did them with like a black-green iridescent chromatic paint, but like a beetle shell. Oh, we got a repair friend. He's in the chat. Repair friend can actually be called Murphy, I guess. Hmm. Ned Club says, hey, guys. I've used my subversary message to ask Ben when he's going to play Xenonauts again. Miss Birthday Bot. Um, so yeah, I was I was ill. Well, I couldn't do it last week. Um, I was going to do it this week, but I'm streaming Tiny Teams from two till eight. So I don't know if I'm going to have time or energy after that to do a bit of Xenonauts. So it might have to be next week, next Thursday. Um, uh oh, which is not ideal. But I want to get back into it. I'm enjoying it a lot. We'll see. I, might, I may have some energy tomorrow, but probably not. It'll probably be next week. <laughs> that was a bad call by that oh guy. Oh my god, did a fucking Zoltan suicide bomber just jump the whole squad? <laughs> oh, he's cloning. Oh god, are we going to have to blow away all of his fucking that Zoltan was, That was what was cool about that other ship, was because... Uh, we had the ion gun, didn't we? And, well, it was the, uh, the suicide bombing... Um, Zoltan ship that we could have started with. Yeah. Just cloning explodey boys. Uh, ow. Hey, jerk off. Okay. Hey! Ow, quit it! Should we send maintenance droid over there? Yeah. He's in the engine room. Oh, jeez, Mento, maintenance bot, go and help my man's on fire. Yeah, you got him now. Oh man, you got him good. Nice. Very cool. Oh god, the O2 room's on fire. That's not a good day for us. Oh, it's okay. We can vent the O2 room. It's got a, it's got its own airlock. Well, maintenance bot doesn't doesn't seem to burn. Does he not burn? Well, maybe he does. No, he doesn't. Wow. Okay, great. Okay, right. We just need to do a little bit of healing. Uh, yeah, someone in chat makes a good point. We can upgrade our teleporter to bypass Zoltan shields. I think that's one of the like science lab upgrades. That sounds very, very good. Are we actually in a Zoltan sector, or is it just, just like a one-off? Uh, hmm, well, maybe not. Go fully healed every time they teleport. Kind of love that. Mm, handy. I mean, but that's more of a. That doesn't actually make us more effective. It just saves you clicking. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite upgrades in any games are things that save me clicking. Uh, I think we have to. It's on the onboard tech menu. Oh. What? What's that? Uh, ben. I have to do the lab first. If we b upgrade the med bay, we get you, the lab for free. Yeah. Which always feels like a weird. It's a weird one. Maybe they're just trying to make the med bay more worth having. 
Uh, okay. Teleporter. Teleporter. Am I just a big... Onboard tech. Oh. oh. Yeah, internal... All right, then number three. Hard light bypass? Teleportation and mind control ignore energy shields. I'm just going to do it because... Yeah. Well, that would be good on the final boss. And... And just if we I, run I just any more of these guys, it's so annoying. Don't want to have to deal with that in the future. Hmm. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your assistance. Yes, thank you, guys. Um, God, I hate that menu. Yeah. Um, is this just law? The, the database? It's a clairvoyant. Okay. Who are the clairvoyants? Offer to help them? They sound nice. Like they've got a cash money crown. Have your slug crew make the trade. Yeah, so they can't, they can't mind control him or trick him. Sure. Maybe that'll help. Uh, Ooh. A oh, it's a stunner, Ben. <laughs> okay, well, go to the shop, sell some of this junk, and Ooh. get the heck out of here. Rattle scum! Uh, uh, Sewer of the Death, thank you for donating. They say, hello, Captain Tom and Passenger Ben. Hail. Tom, I start watching old Star Wars D&D. And I love it. Are you going to make another Star Wars D and D? I hope uh, you guys have a good stream. Uh, oh, he I'll never there. tell. <laughs> uh, if only Tom was just, like working on some kind of new D and D thing, uh, that'd be amazing. It'd be so cool, but I don't think people would be into it. I don't know, man. Give it a try. Okay, because of you, Ben. Do it. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Does our Engi crew say, Oh, no, I can't afford... I can't afford the credits. I'm sure I could find another way to pay you. Oh. But... Pay Check them. out my droid parts. Please, Mr. Engi. <laughs> Put them away. But if he wants to try and attack it. We're evil mantis pirates. That's true. We're going to roleplay this. Uh, off. It's highly unlikely the market will want to trade with us after this. Oh, fuck. We're just going to live that pirate life forever now. They only have one little pew pew. Oh, wow, you just ripped that guy to shreds. Holy shit. Only cooling fans is a pretty, <laughs> good, a pretty good pun. I like that. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Should we send a team to... Take the O2, then they'll have to. Oh no, yeah, that works too. Why wow, you rip them to bits? Uh, one of the civilians is barely alive. The crew tries to bring him to your ship to revive him, but he dies before anything can be done. You sigh, knowing there's no way to forgive this. We didn't even get much loot. No, Probably I thought you'd get loads more from attacking a, a shop. Shit. Well, I hope we've got everything we need. Uh, we're going to murder everyone. Yeah, kill all the shops now. Mm. Uh, fix the drone. Repair the drone. Fix the drone. Oh, five hole repair. Oh, right. Very nice. We'll need that since we can't fix it. Ah, that'll be fine. Theocracy precinct. Who's the theocracy? Um, oh, fuck, I can't remember. Is it rocks? Are they rocks? Abandoned territory feels like it might have. We can beat rocks in a fight. A band territory might have drones in it. Yeah, let's beat let's beat some rocks up. We can punch a rock, and then we're going to a peaceful sector. <laughs> Fresh <laughs> meat. <laughs> Abandon is Lanius. Oh, okay, right. Well, we uh, need to breathe. Yeah, we need to breathe. So let's not do that. Um, the killing is the reward. Says Crook and Kelturian. <laughs> killing is its own reward. That's that's what they say. Uh. Could just fight them. <laughs> Guys, I saw a scary meme. What happened to the Kickstarter roulette guy? We don't know. He's gone. 
Maybe he just, you know, saw too many horny STLs. It's busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to take over or do you want to keep reading? Uh, no, I could have a go. Do you want to fight the rock ship? Uh, well, the evil mantoids, aren't we? We fight, oh god, there's five of them. But they don't I have think it's fine. Bay. They don't have a med bay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, the mans are in the wrong room. Oh, yeah. What part is it? T. Uh, let's get in there. Chomp, 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 chomp. Okay, you um, might be able to do your... I think I'm going to deploy the defense drone. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, don't quite have enough. I'm worried though, because this one will also shoot lasers. So if he fires both at the same time, it might get confused. But it's meant to fire pretty quick. It does fire pretty quick. It shot down three lasers. Didn't shoot down the missile. Because it's too busy shooting lasers. Well, it got <laughs> three lasers down. And he's my uh, pheromone. Black sheep goes and uses combat drugs. They are super effective. Okay, there should be a... Wait, I think you're probably fine in that room. I would have left it because the chain reaction now that one of the rockmen is dead... Oh, those yeah. Those attacks, could cascade, we're more likely to lose people by moving people out. Okay, maybe now bring them back. Yeah, not in a rush. See ya. Oh. Uh, um, you can put the R missile into their guns. Oh, well, that's true. Where'd my missile go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I didn't fire one. Feels weird, man. Okay, just go and rip that guy to pieces. Put him in the, like, shield room. Because uh, one of them all in the same room, right? fucking drone. Jeez. Why is it so shit? It hasn't shot down any missiles. Aeris missile. Uh, you can send the uh, scout the search... Yeah, I'll have to do it next time. I click the wrong button. Um, uh, okay. so I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with that fucking drone. Um, maybe this Engie needs to be a, a engine man, do a bit more dodging. Yeah. Um, uh, meet your mashup. Uh, uh, do these three bucks and they say, hello, Bon and Tem. Have hello. you heard there's an Age of Sigmar RTS being made? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we have. Um, but there isn't like a ton of info on it at the moment. No, lots but, of um, Polonex. But I'm curious. I'm curious about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to play a, um, like a Total War type of like, you know, map and then battles. Age of Sigmar game, just to give me some kind of grounding in the universe. Would be would be really cool. Like, yep. it doesn't need to be the Total War battle engine. I just no. want... Just something where I'm, I've am i got some cities and I'm moving around a map and I know who, who where people are and what the worlds look yeah. like. And something other than Mud World would be fucking awesome. Real nice. Uh, wait, why are you... Why are you what is this plan? Why are you moving a slug man to a different spot? I to knock out there. But if you just kept them all in the same room, they would have just killed the rock man and we'd win. What? Oh god, the... My drones seem to be going out of their way to be terrible. Do you know what I mean? We catch fire a lot. <laughs> we do catch fire. What's our ship made of? Uh, cardboard. It's a board ship. Oh, nice. I but like that. That's good. Uh, I'm all fire and ash. Uh, there's 12 bucks. Thank you very much. Thank you. They say Tomb and Bean. Yes. Uh, I got these bad boys going for their first war tonight. Ooh. And when does the addiction stop? Oh, it doesn't. No. It only gets worse. And then they've got some orcsies. Orcsies! Um, 
Lovely orcs. They are based. Well done. Very good. F very cool. Hmm. I'm personally not a fan of the texture on the base rim. Like some people do it. It's not for me. Yeah, I think uh, just maybe. But I think that's a personal will. choice, really, isn't it? Uh, because I was looking red. And yeah, the addiction, it will never end. No. You're in now. New, and it new lasts army. Forever. Uh, um, we've got a whole load of stuff done. How many points is this? A thousand points? Maybe. I mean, like eyeballing, I feel like. I feel like about a thousand points. Or just under. Wait, or is that literally just the um the combat patrol with a gun and uh yeah, what'd you get in the combat strike. patrol? Did you get the helicopters and the dreadnought? Yeah, yeah, like two loads two loads of boys. Mm. Although he's got like heavy boys, not regular boys, right? No, these are just orc boys, right? right? Two squads of orc boys, oh, yeah, some right. helicopters, a dreadnought, and a war boss. But then there's a but he doesn't the trike and yeah. the gun, which might be added on. Hmm. But very cool. And oh. yeah, you're in. You're in now. Yeah, there's no turning. Luckily, back. you chose orcsies. Good choice. Uh, and that can be fire and ash. The rockman. Very appropriate. Ah, they're good at shields. Welcome aboard. Uh, oh, hey, shit, Tony's. Tony's store. Let's take Tony's free money. It's just free money. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pay them back. Oh, we've got a font change. Why is weird font change? Off to Boom of the our ship. Uh, Swamps. Swamps. <laughs> Swamps' his real name. Swamps' his real name is uh, Meteor Mashup. Wow, we have like filled out this crew. Yeah, really. Though nice. humans. Yeah. You're going out the airlock when uh, we get a better option. <laughs> Should we do guns, I guess? Yeah. It's always useful to have more bodies on the ship when half your crew's away. Sure. Doesn't hurt, does it? Tony! Tony's for the free money. You got some free money for me? Hey, Tony! Take out the loan, 100 scrap. Oh, and he's going to sell us. Uh, yes, laser? Fire laser? Heavy stun? Worms? Boning bay? Mystery boxes! Should we, buy, should we spend the whole loan on mystery boxes? Sure. But you have to buy and sell them. Oh, yeah. Long range scanners? Wah. Bad loot crate. Are you feeling pride and satisfaction? <laughs> Jams their targeting system, weakening their system by two bars. Uses two power, one fuel. Only lasts 45 45. seconds. I guess is okay. That kind of fits with our build. They've got a lot of guns. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. One of their guns can't fire, basically, for 45 seconds. Yeah, we just need more power. Wait, uh, is there anything else that we can sell from that? Can I integrate that into our oh, ship? Oh, oh yeah. Um, Work it out. Oh, how do I onboard? A uh, dragon sword. Uh, the next three bucks. Need dragon sword. They say Tom Ben TJ. I'll be the 69th person to ask you this. Are you going to do a Baldur's Gate three? Uh, either co-op on Wednesdays or stream by yourself. I want to see the dumb shit you get up to. Hmm. Um, I wasn't planning to. I wasn't planning to. I didn't realize you could co-op. No. Maybe like a funny, funny thing to but do. Also, I, I don't know if it's true, but my feeling you is... You can't fuck a bear. <laughs> oh! Oh! Do you not okay. know about... I didn't know how uh, you could fuck a bear. Like, it... Do you want to see? Yeah. My main concern was just it's 95% reading walls of text. Like, you know, old RPGs. Like a normal bear. Just. Oh, he looks like he wants to fuck a bear. 
just... Now, I don't know if you do fuck this bear. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Why? Is that optional or do you have to? Is that just it's, part of the main it's quest? It's completely optional. <laughs> but... Wow. You can fuck a bear. Pretty shit. Um, so I was listening to a podcast by these authors who talk about book stuff. Is there bear fucking in it? And um, they were talking about how there was a big, like, they were looking at, like, trends on what sells and, like, certain genres rise and fall over time as there's, like, fads and people, like, like stuff. And, you know, one book will do really well and then there'll be a whole bunch of people making the same kind of book for a bit. Sure. Like, you know, Young Adult was all about dystopian futures for yeah. a while and stuff like that. So um, after, like, Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, there was a lot of, like, um, adult woman romance fantasy um, about, like, millionaires taking women on, you know, erotic adventures. Ooh. But there was also, because of Twilight, quite a lot of, like, women making out with um, supernatural shape-shifting creatures. Okay, right. What's the and most... So these two genres were both very popular, making a lot of money. So one guy cracked the code. Millionaire Centaur. And, and wrote Bearlionaire... <laughs> The story of a billionaire werebear. <laughs> <laughs> and crossed the streams. <laughs> Barely there. <laughs> Is a werebear the most erotic of the... <laughs> I guess it's punny. Have you ever seen Chuck Tingle? Very familiar with Chuck Tingle. Oh. But... <laughs> I've never looked it up. I only heard them talk about it. Bear Leon uh, book. Hang on. Billionaire. Right Where bear. Where bear billionaire. There you go. Where bear billionaire. Bear Leonaire. Billionaire from Bear Mountain, a werebear romance. Apparently it's done very well. If you just like cross those streams. Have they done a load of them? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Holy shit. Taming the billionaire bear. Werebear billionaire seeking curves. The lost billionaire werebear. Bear billionaire stepbrother. <laughs> The billionaire from Mount Bear. Are these all... Bride of the billionaire bear. Are these by the same people, or is it one genre cannibalizing itself as hundreds of people try to cash in on bear like Scottish popularity? Scottish werebear billionaire. <laughs> oh, heaven forbid a woman have a good time. Oh, and I'm not making fun of that. Like, read whatever you... I read some stuff that's, like, weird, but, like, yeah, like whatever you like. I just think this is kind of funny because I never would have thought this was a popular thing, but you reminded me of it with the with the bear scene. Maybe that's where they got the idea. They were like, people want to fuck a bear. <laughs> you know, this is like, they've sold so many books. Let's put it in the game. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Not us to solve chat. Look, I am all about erotic novels but we can make fun of some subjects <laughs> yeah. I was making fun of Baldur's Gate for bear sex <laughs> and so I'm going to make fun of this for bear sex it's just a real specific niche it's that I did not ex <laughs> was, I didn't realise how big it was <laughs> yeah. I only make fun of it because I don't understand it uh, but now barely on air from Bear, bear Mountain, Mountain. <laughs> Well, it's actually Mount Bear. Bear Mountain is probably a different... Oh, well, I think Mount Bear might be a different thing. It's Mount Bear in Scotland, because I was drawn in by Scottish <laughs> belly in there. Right. There was a Bear Mountain in America as well. That was a different book. That really? Wow. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Baldur's Gate, less weird now. 
a lot less weird. Turns out they're actually really playing the hip yeah. trend. <laughs> yeah. They're actually really basic. Okay. I know, right? Way to jump on a bandwagon, wow. guys. Wow, God. <laughs> uh. oh. So I was wondering about what, what is the etiquette of, of banging a shapeshifter? Because let's say, um, so I was watching Infinity War, right? And Scarlet Witch and Vision have a sexy time in a hotel together. Yeah. Vision can completely change what he looks like. Okay, yeah. Like there's one scene where he's just come out of his, he's just been born mm -hmm. and he sees that Thor's got a cape and he's like, oh, that's a sweet cape. I want a cape. And then he has a cape, it yeah. grows out of him. And then like he can change his face to look like human skin. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like he can basically do and look however he likes. Sure. So if you're in a committed relationship with someone who can do that, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, you know, just let me know if you, you know, if you want anything a different shape or you want, what do you like? We can, we can, we can work it out. And that's like lovely, right? You know, you're, you're, you're working together to both be happy, but then you come back just with like a big list <laughs> or like a Photoshop collage you've made. I think I you, feel like it, that gets weird, right? I think you you ease into it, right? Mm -hmm. Look like, like this. I think you're going a bit too hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, if your your partner comes to you and they're like, oh, I got some fluffy handcuffs, and you're like, yeah. oh, that's a bit of fun. Mm. And then the next night, you're like, oh, I'm so, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Um, so I actually converted the basement, now come into my fuckatorium uh, <laughs> yeah. with the plastic light yeah. walls we're, and, you know, the, the sex mega Olympics setup. on the mega swing. You're going from 0 to 60 immediately. Right, so you like, don't just say, look like this now, please. Yeah. <laughs> I've drawn a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you ease into that. You build yeah. up. Mm. Like, you know, okay. you need to leave room for you guys to develop something. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't know, where, at what point is it, does it go from, like, being, like, normal to just being oddly specific and ruins <laughs> the relationship when you basically ask them to turn into a completely different person? I feel like if you had that power, you would at some point. You would. You'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, boom. Um, I want to fuck the queen. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, weird, but sure. Sure. Now a bear. Now a bear. <laughs> but then, um, I guess you've got to watch out. You, like, you don't want to upset that person. No. Because you might be having sex with them, and they're like, you've been asking a lot of demands. You know, you are so close to finishing. And then they're like, boom, now I'm your dad. <laughs> and you're like, oh, ah! fuck. <laughs> like, they can, <laughs> they they can, can fuck just real turn bad. that power on you and use it for <laughs> evil. <gasps> yeah, you got to stay on that good side. Really be careful. Mm. Um. I just don't it. think that's been properly explored in modern media. The shapeshifter. Mm. Well, maybe it has. I've not been reading the right books. Should we write our own series of erotic books mm -hmm. about erotic shapeshifter? Yeah. How many centaurs? Mm. Well, yeah, sure, they can turn into a centaur. Mm. Maybe their default shape is centaur, but they have to shape shift into regular person. Right. And they have a job as like uh, like a horse riding police officer. Just, it just writes itself. Um, and then it's always like, oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll just go back to the, you know, the stable to get off my horse. I don't want to get off the horse now. Yeah. I'll do it later and I'll meet you after. I'll, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> okay, I think that, that definitely works. Mm -hmm. um, what is a good pun in there? Like, because it'd be nice if they were a millionaire as well. <laughs> or a billionaire. Yeah, maybe they're an... Um, but we need to use a different word to like you know, look different. Maybe they're like, I don't know, an oligarch. <laughs> right, okay. Or a magnate. What's another word for like, very wealthy? Yeah. But not just boring old millionaire. Because mm. I feel like that whole, you know, you, you need to stand out from the noise. You need to cut through. 
There's, there's, there's something like an entrepreneur. Cent mm, tycoon. Centaur tycoon. Centaur pr preneur. <laughs> Centropreneur. <laughs> is a. <laughs> it's hard to say, but barely a there. Ain't, ain't that much better. The shape of money. Philanthropist. Oh, that's a really. That's a word you could say wrong. In an erotic sense. Yeah. I've seen that episode of Always Sunny. Oh, God. <laughs> Centaur Erotic Officer CEO. <laughs> I kind of don't. <laughs> it's the best one so far. <laughs> but we need more shape-shifting in there as well. Mm. Uh. Wow. Chief Executive <laughs> Officer. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why not merge them, to, merge them together? Well, C could be for ch Central. Changeling. Changeling Executive Officer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We'll, uh, we'll do it. Alpha Centaur Erotic. Oh my god, that's... That's awful. Centaur Erotic is pretty good. Billionaire, like a horse. Oh, there we go. Like billion mare. The centaurotic billion mare. Billion mare. With with this close to greatness, it, Tom. It, like we got the name. <laughs> yeah. Centaur of your affection. That could be the first, you know. Oh, that's the first one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Love it. Uh, is there a store? Is that guy a shop? Yeah. He can you repair a, a little? Oh, yeah. As your shipping. Oh, we probably can so what? some fuel as well. I don't know how to use that thing I bought. I only just got it, but I don't see where the button is for it. Uh, uh, so, Satak Oz donates five bucks. Thank you, Satak Oz. Thank you. Um, and they say, Ben Tom, ah, it's me, Planty. Why did you have to airlock me? Oh, uh, anyway, as pence my inferiority, please accept these pics of a freshly painted and based Angmar boys. Ooh, uh, I have Angmar boys. Ammo came from space. I like an Angmar. Uh, Angmar, very cool. Oh, millionaire stock exchangeling. Millionaire stock exchangeling. The billionaire stock exchangeling. <laughs> Uh, your Imgur link is... It's bad. Or just slow. Uh, I posted it in chat, so maybe that works. But... Oh, keep fucking cl cloning faster than we can destroy the clone. Work. Your link... Your link is bad. And you should Except feel bad. We can't see your... Your things. Stallionaire. Ooh. Or stud. Stud is good. You could do some kind of stud. Stallionaire sounds pretty nice. Yeah. That's good. It's very... Like stallion. Mmm, that works. <laughs> Sometimes that missile just doesn't fire. Is that the why it's so cheap? <laughs> yeah, because it's just sometimes a dud. Maybe. Right, I am actually going to zip off and break this clone bay while they're not watching. Oh, they've locked themselves in. Nice. Oh, shit. I miss all my own guy. Missile weapons room. Oh, just did it again. 
It just didn't fire. Oh. You should have a proper read of that. There, nice. We got him. Oh, yeah, we do need a, a better single shot missile. Yeah, what is the that thing? Fire chance. Uh, I don't see anything about it. It only fires if something else is powered. Oh, oh right. Oh, oh there they go. <laughs> wow, that feels powerful. If you can save them up, save them up as a weird like charge thing. Yeah, yeah. If you're fighting against an anti-missile drone or something, right? It has a ten percent chance of firing. No, it doesn't. It has a ten percent chance of starting a fire. Yes. Come on, nonsense. Come around. on. Don't speak with authority on, on something you, you don't understand. Dummies, your big dunguses. What the heck? Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, Tristan the Disgruntled. <gasps> uh, do you need six bucks? You, the Tristan. They say voluptuous Tom and oh. plague bearer Ben. Ooh. I managed to snag some 1980s Beaky Boys on eBay that I'm Ooh. cleaning up whilst I listen to you. That's fun. My question to you is: What chapter should I paint these tiny boys as? Mm. Crimson Fist's a classic, but yep. I'm undecided. I would be tempted by Crimson Fists. Whichever one you think looks the coolest. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Um, you could look through the old Rogue Trader book for some like retro color schemes. Helen Griffins. Oh, Helen Griffins is a classic. Uh, paint them as the... Um, Birmingham Boys. The Birmingham Boys. Or oh, Space Sharks. Hold Ben. Hoddle. Oh. No, I'm gonna um, oh. I'm gonna wave assault them because they they're rock boys. They're so tough anyway. Like I think you could have could have held. I'm not gonna risk it. Oof. Oh, yikes. Who's our? Uh... Oh, it's always fucking fixie bots. <laughs> Come on, my dude. Uh... Soul drinkers. I don't know. I'd... It's tricky, really, because the beakies, the old beakies, don't have any trim on them at all. So you want a chapter that doesn't rely on the contrasting color of their trim. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of chapters that don't look as good without trim. You want to be careful. Uh, you can TP. Uh, yeah. uh, working on the. Is working image of the links working again? Uh. Nice. We're in. Pack the mainframe. Uh, oh, they are base, and the bases look very pretty. You've got a real nice, real nice troll man. That guy looks great. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, he's the troll king. You got a witch king. Witch king looks very amazing. Nice. There's the bog world. chieftain. Super duper cool. Mm. Spooky ghosts. Nice. Boo. Other ghosts. A uh, different type of ghost. Have you? It's the first. I didn't see the first picture. Has that got the orcs in? There's a couple of little orcsies oh, yeah. hanging out. Nice. These guys look ace. They're yeah, really nice. Really nice. And nice. everything has been based. Mm, makes all the difference. Oh god, you've got like a little bit of everything in there. That's such a cool arm. Yeah, oh, and that's why I like. That's why I've got Angmar. You've, they've got all the cool stuff. They've got ring wraiths. They've got orcs. They've got trolls and wargs. It's cool. And they're very spooky. <gasps> Do a yump. Um, nice. Uh, Mac Macarado. It's 12 bucks, thank you, Macarado. And they say, Tom and Ben, yes. thanks for always making Wednesdays fun. I hope Ben feels better soon. Have you seen Post Malone bought the unique One Ring MTG card for over $2 million? Oh my god, who's Post Malone? And hasn't thrown it into a volcano. Uh... Kremlo quam ut de ruim te. How have you pronounced that? Post Malone. You you know Post Malone, musician. What, what songs have they done? A lot of face tattoos. That is face tattoos. I recognise his face. Didn't know he was into magic. Uh, he loves magic. Oh, okay. Um, and so I it's I I honestly like it that he has got it. Um, because he's a mega magic nerd, mm -hmm. 
Um, and he seems like a nice guy from what I've seen. Oh, okay. I know nothing about him, but I would assume on sight that someone with face tattoos is, you know, not, not nice. But well, that's me being judgmental, isn't it? That's you judging a book by its cover. Yeah, the cover that it chose to wear. Um, oh, well, okay. Take your word for it. Cool. Uh, that's tattooist. Bad Ben. I think it's because when I was a kid, the only people with face tattoos were hardened criminals. Yeah, so it kind of got a... Got a bad vibe, because you had, rep. like, prison tattoos on your face, didn't you? That's the only face tattoos you ever saw. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm. Uh, oh, well, good for him. But yeah, I, so I thought, thought um, uh, Brandon Sanderson was going to buy it. Really? Because he's a magic nerd. He's got, like, a basement full of rare magic cards. And he's also, like... A millionaire werebear. Um, <laughs> no, he's not a werebear. He's a millionaire. He has like the most successful Kickstarter in history, so we can afford it. And also, he's a fantasy author, so I assume he cares about Lord of the Rings and okay. loves magic. He's got like a black lotus and all the rest of it. Wow. But maybe he's too sensible to spend two million pounds on one card. I guess it depends how much money you have. It's all context, right? I think even if I was you know, one of the richest people in the world. I might be like, I could spend two million pounds on that because I could, I wouldn't affect me in any way. But I think I would feel guilty. I think I would feel like maybe I should just donate that money to charity instead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You could donate two million to charity as well. We could donate four million to charity. <laughs> like, depends how rich I am, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, um... If I was a billionaire, yeah, I'd hundred percent, would hundred percent have bought it. If like oh, maybe, money, I don't, I don't know if I care as much about magic. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would. Or, Is there something I would care enough about to spend a stupid amount of money on if money were no object? I would buy Dogs of War, Warhammer Army. <laughs> yeah, but like us. Going through like eBay postings and trying to mess yeah. it out, and I think it would cost about two to three grand wow. to buy. It would probably be cheaper to commission a 3D artist yeah, to design sure. a new model range and print it for you. But it would be the same, would it? It would be the <laughs> yeah. same. It might be better. <laughs> probably. probably. <laughs> but it wouldn't have that nostalgia, I suppose, um, would it? Do you want your Dogs of Raw rule book? I have the Dogs of Raw rule book. A few minis. No, you hold on to them because they're worth good fucking money. Um, mm. Also, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna paint it. It's one of the problems. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, if you were a billionaire werebear, you could, you'd have all the time to paint in the world. Yeah. That doesn't mean you'd get any more painting done. Does no, it? I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. It's not how time works, is it? Uh. God, what is this? We're getting nut juice uh, all over us. They nutted on us. Fuck. Too much nut. Jeez. Oh, they fixed us up. Oh. oh, come on. Fucking asshole. It's a war crime. Uh, but yeah, like when you put into context, like if you're... If you've got a, a billion. Yeah, which is just an absurd amount of money. Because like, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's just one step up from a million. But when you see it like visually represented, like, it is just an astronomical oh. amount more. Like I remember seeing a, like a video uh, which was like talking about like the scale of scaling of wealth and how people mm. like spend it. And so it's talking like the idea of like if someone earns like 30,000 30, dollars a year 30,000 pounds you know is like, like a, a fairly average income like uh like your average wage in america mm. something like that um and then it was like to help you understand how blase you could be with money mm. like if you're to buy a, a car you might spend ten thousand pounds right uh ten thousand okay. dollars someone might spend that yeah know? that's an amount of money people spend i wouldn't but yeah people yeah but Sure. Uh, but so if you make, uh, for you to spend that, mm -hmm. that's 
a third of your income. Like, holy shit. Mm, that's a uh, very significant purchase. But suddenly, if you now, if you move up to someone who's earning three hundred thousand pounds a year, mm. uh, so you, to you, instead of you're spending ten thousand pounds on that car, you're now spending a thousand pounds on that car. Mm -hmm. Like to equate it to still the way that you live your life. Yeah. Then you go up to three million, and so now that car only costs you a hundred pounds, and you're like, oh, that's not too bad. Mm. If you earn thirty million a year. Buying that car is ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, it literally means nothing to you. Uh, and like, as you keep going up, suddenly when uh, you hear of like, you know, people that buy loads of cars that might be more expensive, when you're like, well, actually, to them, that's like spending two hundred quid on something. Yeah, fuck it, you probably would do that multiple times. Um, yeah, over the course of years, you'd have a little collection because why not? Uh, or like the, um, you know, going and eating, spending a thousand pounds on at a restaurant every night of the week. When to them, that's like a pound to eat in the greatest restaurants <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, yeah, of course you would. If you could go to someone that has fantastic food for a pound every night, you'd definitely do that. Um, and so suddenly, if yeah, actually those, buying, those weird decisions make more sense, don't they? When when you look like, at it like that. When it like scales in that way. Uh, oh, the teleporter. Teleporter's off, but we've got borders, so. Oh, nice. There we go, I fixed it. Wait, but they boarded us. Yeah, idiots. I've oh, we're uh, playing funny teleporters. Oh, you fucking pee hole. <laughs> well, they can't heal. Uh, so convince you to become a millionaire, a billionaire. Oh, good choice. What about a billionaire? <laughs> Okay, you get to be a millionaire, but you are cursed. With a, what, the wear curse? Yeah, you, you're an actual, uh, like, you got to watch out, because they are going to murder Zoe in that room. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, let's say you get the proper werewolf curse from horror movies. Okay. Um, but you're a millionaire. Do you, um, do you take right. that old witch's curse? What is the rule? Because mm -hmm. I'm a millionaire. Is that I just have one million pounds? Uh, or do I get a million pounds every year? Let's say... I want a million pounds every year. Okay, well, okay, yeah, sure. We'll say that. We'll start with that and see how we get on. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. They want the money back. This never, no, there's never been consequences uh -oh. for my actions before. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, we've not had the, Tony! We've not had the debt very long. <laughs> we haven't even spent it, Tony. Come oh, on. Uh, TJ's rolling out. Take, take it easy, TJ. <laughs> Good night, TJ. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no we, we can keep going. Uh, we'll just keep going. Okay. Me too. Um, maybe we can take him. I mean, he's got a lot of guns. Look at that. There's like four There's flat so guns. many flat guns. And beams. There's a bit of me that wants to see how the fight goes. But he might not have many crew. You know, we might be able to just get in there and, like, fuck him up. We can jam his weapons for 45 seconds. Do that. I want to try it for science. Because if we kill him, we get 140 bucks. Well, we already have the 140 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try. He oh, they've got quite a lot, lot of toys. Of if we can jump into their gun bay, right, right. Uh, we might need to send... Border no drones. Weapons. I'll get defense drone. Defense drone, I think, is the one. Um, They're mind controlling us. We don't really have enough power for all our shit. Um, I think oxygen is a luxury at this point. <laughs> um, I think we just need to board right now. Yeah, we do, but where do we want to board? I think guns. Yeah, maximum. Maximum intensity. Okay, they've jammed our piloting. That's not good because we've actually. Oh shit, they boarded us. Oh yeah, crap. We don't even have doors. <laughs> we could battle bot, but he's he's in boarding mode. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Well, not much we can do about this right now. Let's just rip them apart in melee. Well, we can suffocate them. I've got to take out the clone bay first. Okay, Clone Bay's down, which is a great start. God. Oh, 
Oh my god. Okay, uh, where's... Keep fighting. If we just stay there, fuck the people on our ship. Yep. Gladly. We're like Brock boy. We Ash keep fighting and we rip his, um... Uh, guns apart. Yeah, okay. Although this could just kill us. Maybe we want to go for the mind control. Uh... Eh. No, I think we have to take out the guns. The mind control is meaningless compared to 5,000 flak the, guns. Yeah, that's true. We've got to rip those guns up. Okay. Uh, can you... Did you pop your pheromones? Uh, good call. Okay, you shot down some oh, of we it. We are nearly dead. We've got five whole Yeah, but if he blows up our ship, all of his crew die, so his run is over as well. <laughs> Mutually assured destruction. Perfect. Um... Oh, here we go. Good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> We've got his ship, though. Look yeah. at that. All his crew are dead. We own your ship. We have Tony's ship now. That seems fair to me. We win. I think. We just swapped ships. Yeah. We just go and we just delete the clone bay, save, and, <laughs> um, you know, put our DNA in there. Great. Okay, well, stop ripping the guns apart. These are our guns now. Bullshit. That's not true. I think the game's bugged. Uh. <laughs> oh, wow. Shit. Well, I think it was worth it. I wanted to see what Tony was going to do, and it turns out <laughs> Tony's got to pay that debt back. Tony's pretty fucking strong. Kind of. If only we'd spent that money on like more shields. Uh. We might have been able to survive that. Maybe not. That's a lot of flat. Quite a lot of flat. We beamed our boys back. Do you think we could have killed his boarding party before he fired? Maybe. I don't know. I think we were in a very difficult spot. Yeah, I thought we could rip his guns down quicker than that. But I guess he must have just a ton of power in it. Oh, apparently it unlocks a ship if you beat him. Really? Worth trying for. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, well, we've still got some things to read. Mm. Uh, Fire Lord Buppage. Uh, the next three bucks, think Fire Lord. Okay. And they say, death and taxes. Mm. G'day from down under. Uh, the part of Oz I live in has unpredictable weather. Mm. Uh, often unsuitable for using spray paint. Oh. Try my tiny toys. Is using standard paint to undercoat a viable option? Or will mm. that not work very well? It does, bead frog. it does work. Um, so what I use is... Um, uh, I use, uh, what's it called? The Vallejo stuff. The Vallejo Model Air? No, I don't use the, it's like this stuff. Oh, Vallejo Surface Pro. Oh, that's the one. This is literally the one here. But not in a little, it comes in like uh, this one. Oh, even that's quite small. It's a big one. Here we go. So that's like, you know, five or six inches high. Um, this stuff works really great, except I don't have the gloss one. I use the matte one. Um, it's really good. Sometimes what I do is I'll spray on my models and then I'll bring them in and then I'll realize like I've missed some bits under the armpits oh, and okay, yeah. stuff like that. So I put a little water down a little bit of this and paint it all over and it works great. Um, the only advantage is it takes slightly longer and you have to be a bit more careful about applying it evenly and not having like yeah, getting brush strokes and brush stuff. Brush in it, but this stuff's pretty good. Um, the other alternative is, is obviously an airbrush, because you can do that in any weather and indoors. Uh, yeah, I just airbrush hmm. base coat my stuff now. Um, but it's quite expensive to set up if you don't have a compressor and an airbrush. Yeah, for sure. Um, but but it is the yeah. one of the best wargaming purchases I've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Um, and I only wish I'd busted into it sooner. Yeah, it's a big time saver and lets you do some cool effects as well that you can't normally do. Uh, yeah, it's really, really good. Very, mm. very nice. So yeah, airbrush number one. Second option is something like this. Yeah. But I recommend it over, don't just get like black or white paint, like a Games Workshop black paint and put it straight on because there's something different about a primer. It does like cover better and stick better. Mm. Um, I don't know the chemistry about it. Um, 
but I wouldn't just slap on normal black paint. He's just on an airbrush. So we both have the Iowata Revolution. Yeah. Um, but I haven't tried many others. So then might, maybe there's other good ones. No, I've used a, had like a much, much cheaper one before that I just didn't get on with at all. But uh, yeah, bought this one and it has been amazing. Although mine hasn't got the cap on it. So mine doesn't have the cap. Must be a slightly there's different the, one. I, the Revolution Pro or something like that. Um, this one. No? What? Okay, well, it looks the same. It's in the same box, but it's, it doesn't have a cap on it for some reason. I guess it's a slightly different model. Uh, let me do a mini as a video about airbrushes. I'll check that out. There'll be people that give much better advice. Um, but one of the things that really helped sell me on this was... Oh, is it the BR? Was because I feel like... Oh, yeah, maybe it is the BR. Yes, this I think is the this one. one. Yeah, it's a bit cheaper, actually. This um, is the one I've got. That uh, Adam Savage did a video when he was in Weather Workshop, and um, basically all of the model makers at Weather Workshop had this exact airbrush as their, like, workhorse mm. uh, airbrush. Not their, like, fancy, fine, like, super fine detail one. Yeah. This is, was the one that they just fucked around with and was like... And, and they are, they know what they're doing. They're very um, good. So I'll trust their judgment on that. And so the fact that, yeah, if they all just have that one just like sat at their, their desk at all time, mm. it's like, great, I'm in. Um, but it's not, as far as airbrushes go, it's on the cheaper end as well. Like, yeah. you, you can go 50 quid for a, like a real basic one that probably is only good for priming. Um, but you can go up to like five, six, seven hundred pounds for like oh, super like, fancy Yeah, like the brushes. sky is the limit. Yeah. It just keeps going up. Uh, it doesn't come with a pump. You need no, to buy a pump. You need a a uh, brush pump isn't too expensive, but you, you might be looking at, you know, 50 quid to 100 quid for a pump as well. Uh, this... Yeah, I think this is very similar to the one I got. Um, but yeah, you need some kind of air compressor. There's a million different ones out there. Um, that do. But Wow, yeah. it really feels like the scaling is you have a thing mm -hmm. and then just bolt like, you know, 10 quid on to stick something else on top because yeah, <laughs> just, just keep building up. <laughs> uh, I guess there's a factory in China that makes this unit and it's cheaper to buy those components and bolt them onto your thing yeah. than it is to like build it yourself. And just boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I can see why, you know, airbrush isn't for everyone. It's not cheap. Um, it's a bit of an extravagance, but can be can be good if you want to get into it. Because you don't just need that. You also then need the cleaning stuff and all the fluids and like, it's a whole thing. Yeah, you're probably going to spend 200 quid getting it set up, but... How big are they? The pictures don't help. Uh, this one is it's about, about that, that big. About that. Roughly. Not too big. Um, it's probably dimension. Like Amazon normally has dimensions. Yeah. But yeah, all you need is like a bottle of cleaner, a bottle of thinner. Um, yeah. And a little. I have one of those little things that holds my brush. Oh, yeah, me too. And spray into to clean it. Uh, you know I've got one on Amazon that literally came with a. That one. Oh. Uh, that thing. I think I got one. Does that come with some cleaning? cleaning things as well. Maybe. Maybe I think I Something like this that. One There's well. a diff million different brands that all do the same thing. Uh, yeah. Can't rate it highly enough. Loved it. Hmm. Uh, Pie Dweller. Uh, it's next 10 bucks. Pie Dweller. Thank you. And they say, uh, mostly middle sliders. Law Hammer Ben and Ooh. Herald of Kragnos. Ooh. Your Hammer Tom. Uh, purebred Vodgobo here. Uh, signing in to pay my tribute to our Centaur overlords. And they have sent some Hero Forge things. Oh, God, can I copy that? Yes, I can. Uh, 
Instead, he wins the race. You there. get that, I believe. Well, not one found. Of, one of them is page not found. Uh, the other one is very much slow loading. Very slow. Oh. oh, wow. It's me as a centaur. It's centaur Ben. Holding a toy glider and some dice. He loves his toy glider, that Ben. It's true. I had it in the video we did. Um, and the other one. Do I just need to... Surely that should work. Uh, oh. Ah, right. That, that'll be why. Get rid of the O2 as well. There you go. Oh, it's a Tom Tor. Tom Tor. A Ben Tor. <laughs> wow, the fucking nose. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Uh, but very accurate. And I've got a horn, and I've got a big dice. I love it. Man, Hero Forge has come a long way. They didn't used to be anywhere near this customizable. Well, yeah, you couldn't make centaurs before. Oh. Uh, amazing. It's very pretty. It's got my jacket and my very oh. open Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, and your, your tootin' horn? My toot toot. Toot the horn. Very good. You look like you're cross with that dice. I do look cross with the dice. Wow, it's kind of like a pretty fucking horrible dice as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you for being upset with it. It's kind of pretty, uh, <sighs> pretty gross, but that's kind of my sort of style. Very cool. Oh, speaking of dice, actually, I watched... Um, uh, You're watching Dice Without Me? Kind of, but not really. What? So, you know the, the painting phase? It's like... Um, it's a podcast by some people who used to work at Games Workshop. Oh, yeah. So I've seen a few... Um, that's Peachy. Yeah. And he has a different guest on every week. So this week, this one here, we're talking about contrast paints. The guy he's chatting to used to be Games Workshop's product development manager for things that aren't miniatures. Okay. So he's the guy who like sourced and produced like all those weird like gimmicky hobby things. Like, right, um, paint pots. Yep, like the water pot and the... Um, the little like hand flamer airbrush thing. Okay. Um, yeah. And all the weird dice, like the squig dice and stuff. And the little servo skull tape measure. Amazing. Um, so it's just a really interesting chat where he just talks about like, you know, how they decide what they're going to do and why they make the things they make and why they don't make other things. Because they talked about trying to do a Games Workshop airbrush. And he was like, the, we, you know, we looked into it, we talked to the factories, we mapped out what it would look like, how much it would cost. And it was like, well, you know, we could just sell everyone an airbrush that's just like one that already exists, but it costs fifty pounds more, right. and it has a Games Workshop skull on it. And we were like, uh, people, maybe people we would buy it. <laughs> it's not like they don't do that with basically everything else. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'd recommend that was an interesting like peek behind the curtain on like why they make the decisions they do make. Um, basically, it all comes down to everything they make is aimed at um, people who are new to the hobby. Yeah, like that's kind of been the thing for a long time. But why did they change the dice then? Uh, he left. Uh, <laughs> so he doesn't know why, like they asked, they talked about that for a bit, like why are the dice different? Why are the, um, there's something else that's new that's not as good. Um, can't the remember. rules. <laughs> the miniatures. <laughs> um, and he's just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they changed that. I wasn't, I wasn't there. Um, oh shit. Yeah. Kind of interesting to see what goes into it. Mm. They, they did um, look into doing a, uh, a paint drying plasma pistol that was basically a hairdryer um, that's shaped like a plasma pistol and you like blast your miniatures with it. Okay. It sounded kind of fun. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Kind of wild. But then there was all these regulations about having like a high... Um, uh, like, if it was, like, a high energy... Because a hairdryer needs, like, a high power source. Right. It couldn't okay. have had batteries in it. Um, so they would have had to plug it in, and then it becomes this, like... Oh, you've got, got to follow all the EU regulations on, like, electrical equipment. Infinitely more complicated. And I guess you can't have just one product that you're selling to everyone. Mm -hmm. Oof. And, like, I didn't know this. Um, Games Workshop Superglue is watered down on purpose. Not because it's cheaper, although that obviously helps, but because um, it dries slower... And little 12-year-old fingers don't get instantly stuck together 
Oh. So they purposely make it a slow drying super glue for, for all kids. Really? Which I had no idea about. Wow. Pretty cool. The more you know. Mm. But yeah, he didn't go into enough detail. I think you'd be disappointed if you listened to it just for dice. Check. I'm just, I'm only they, there for dice. They check. barely talked about the dice. But when they started talking about it, I was like, ooh. <gasps> and then I was disappointed. They didn't, didn't go into it more. Rats. Why are little kids using super glue to assemble their Warhammer? To glue models? their models together. What else? Uh, NPC 200. Uh, I think it's five bucks, the NPC. It's a tanker, Tom, man. Bullets, Ben. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my first mini. It is the rare Japanese Panzer T-34 used in Operation Iraqi Freedom in Mongolia against the Colombian army during World War I. Okay. What? No, that doesn't... None of those things make sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's and it's a fucking Sherman! <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the best. It's the best thing you've ever been said. <laughs> it's the best. It's just the best thing ever. It's just a German tank. It's so rare. Zero were produced. <laughs> Like, you kind of had me, like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe the Japanese captured a T-34. Wait, Hang on, what? Uh. Wow. Wow. Uh, mm. uh, Eldritch Nerd, and it's five bucks. See, Eldritch Nerd. They say, Tom and Ben, mm. if you think the new Epic 40K rules might be awkward, do you think Bolt Action could be adapted for a smaller scale 40K? Um, oh, like Flames of War. <laughs> I'd play Epic Armageddon, I reckon. Rather than going to all the work of writing rules for every unit into bolt action. Mm. Problem with bolt action, I, I like it. It's a fun game, but it has two big issues. One is that um, it's very swingy. Like, there's so many different rules in there. Like, if you have an airstrike or an artillery strike and you just roll a couple of sixes... <laughs> fucking hell, they've just killed like half your army. Mm. Um, it can get really, like some of the units like roll a one, nothing happens or it blows up, roll a six and destroy three units. It's oh, like, geez. it's okay. fucking wacky, um, which stops me from being able to play it seriously because you can just get super diced on a, yeah. on a lucky spike. And the other problem is because it obviously represents human people fighting human people, there's really not a lot of room for variance between, like, skill and equipment. Right, okay. Like, how would you put a space marine and a Gretchen and a human and a cultist within the limited scope of, of making your troops feel different? Right. And actually make okay. them feel different and unique and not ridiculous? Yeah, yeah, like, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I don't think bolt action as it works currently, has enough scope for the wide range of unit types you'd want in Warhammer. Um, not without making them feel either very samey or boring. Um, that's, that's what I reckon. That makes sense. Um, but, you know, there's a million different like large-scale battle rules out there. If you're just doing Horus Heresy, then, yeah, I guess bolt action would work. Because you don't need a million different stat lines for a million different aliens. Well, everyone's because everyone's a space so. marine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and any like large scale World War Two or modern warfare, like six mil rule set, could probably be adapted. Because it's just tanks and infantry and stuff, right? Mm. Maybe. But then maybe not, because a lot of those rule sets rely on like cover and maneuver and stuff, and space marines care not for cover. Well, I don't know. They don't hate it. I don't hate it, but... Plus one cover, plus one drama, see? <laughs> yeah. It's not really a big part of the, the battles of, like, manoeuvring around to outflank enemy positions out of their cover. It's more, you know, heroic chainsaw charges over the top of trenches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Look on the left of the screen, near the hide rooms button, at the Mantis.
There's a mantis. He's trying to pick up a spanner. And he can't do it. Oh no, he keeps slipping out of his fingies. Oh, see, he's bad. <laughs> bad, bad at repairs. That's cute. I like that. That makes sense. Mm. Uh, Soviet Lewis. Uh, thinks five bucks. He's mm. Soviet Lewis. And they say, I really enjoyed the stream last week with Tom and Lydia. Mm. Uh, whenever I see them together, I like to imagine that they're the last in the race of giants. Mm. And... A depressed scientist is watching them, thinking, the last male of their kind, and he won't shut up about dice. You know, if they weren't so interesting, I wouldn't keep talking about them. But they just are. It's everyone else's fault for not being interested. Yeah. You're to blame. <laughs> yeah. Not me. Just get on Tom's level already. Hurry up. I like this dice. Very cool. Very fun. Are there any cool dice kickstarts at the moment? I'm not checked in. Um, oh, who knows? Uh, yeah. A little, like, probably like a, probably like a week or two. Dice. I want something real good. Mm. Lucky dog. There's a pumpkin. Oh, these aren't dice. Oh, a mausoleum from Elden Ring. Oh, dice tower. That's pretty fucking rad, actually. I like that. I like those weird tortoise monsters. Yeah. Ah. Okay, I don't want the head on it, but I like uh, the rest of it. Yeah, you don't have to put the head on. Pretty cute. That's fun. Where do the dice go in? Oh, I guess in the top. But you have yeah. to take the lid off. Roll on out. Pretty good. Cool. That's nice. That's a fun... Uh, a fun thing. Epic battles. Can I see epic battles? It just sounds, sounds epic. Sparkly diamond dice? What do you look for in a dice? Does it just have to be... Si oh, what about periodic table dice? Uh, epic battles first. Mm. Mm. This is more cards than it's dice. Much more card-based. I haven't seen a single dice yet. Oh, there they are. There we go. Eh, they're not the most exciting dice. What about these guys? Wow, they actually made out of... Can you make stuff out of all of them? I feel like... Well, you don't want the mercury dice. That doesn't seem like the best one. <laughs> no, or the... Frozen? You know, uranium dice. That seems risky. <laughs> yeah. uh, not all of them are very stable. Oh, but these ones are made out of what ma they are. Is that right? God, how much is that? I bet it's expensive. Also, D20, not my favorite dice. Oh. More of a D6 man, Ben. Pure periodic metals. Copper. Wow. <gasps> would, would copper keep its sharpness or would it wear down over time? Well, I imagine all dice would wear down over time. True, but at different rates, ben. right? Gets us all. <laughs> Some metals are substantially more resilient to that than others. Yeah, you know, like yeah, a lead like, dice would get rounded off pretty soon, pretty quickly, just by, you know, rubbing it in your fingers. Pretty fast. Will it turn green like in Minecraft? Ooh, good point. Oh, get some verdigris. That'd be nice. Because what do you need to do that? Just get it wet for a bit. Yeah, get some bird poo on it. Zinc dice. Ooh. Don't recommend trying to eat your dice. I like, I don't know why, I like the little periodic table design. I think that looks good. Aluminium. It's all right. Magnesium. Oh, don't get, drop this in the water. Or oh, set it on fire. Yeah, because this like burns in water? No, you're thinking of um, something else. Magnesium burn very easily, but not in water, right? That's like. You put, it, you put it in the water, it goes... No. Sodium. I'm thinking of sodium. Cesium. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of cesium. Yeah, okay, that makes that's sense. That's right. Or potassium, potassium, that might be the one. No. One of them definitely make, has a quite a visual reaction to water. If I was a billionaire, I'd buy a diamond dice. Oh. Titanium. Uh, titanium dice? An iron dice? 
These are some of the nicer dices we've seen. Cobalt. These were D6s as well, Tom. I, I like the D6s. How much for that whole set of D6 dice? Uh, 20. What is gadolinium? Are they just making up elements now? <laughs> I've never heard of that one. Yeah, and how come you don't get the whole thing? You'd get a little chunk of it. And yttrium. Is that a thing? I don't think some of these exist. <laughs> <laughs> I think they made these up. Oh, you get a little display case wow. for them. Oh my god, if they did a fucking weekly <laughs> That's thing. exactly what I was thinking. Oh. Every week, get a magazine about your element and one dice. Your <laughs> science dice. And you get the, the box and you put them in. Um, oh, that would be cool. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be with that. I could fuck with that. I mean, how many of these are you like legally not allowed? Well, I guess that's why they make up some new elements, so you can put those in instead. You just get a neon green, like, uranium dice. Yeah. <laughs> that's just made of plastic or something. You can get, like, uranium glass, right? Oh, okay. Do you know that stuff? Like, people people collect it. And that's fine, but it is radioactive. Oh. Uh, am I thinking of that? You're... I don't know. Uranium glass. And it's, like, glass that will glow. Because it's irradiated. I don't actually know what it is, but I know of it. Wow. But I guess that's probably under a black light. Okay. Is it actually radioactive? Like, if you have that in your house, are you going to get cancer? I don't think so. It's UV reactive. Oh. Okay. Because they used to paint it onto clock hands on bedroom alarm clocks. You oh. See the hands in the dark. Yeah, and then everyone, their fucking faces melted, right? Uh, no, I think it was because it was such a minuscule amount. It was mostly safe. But I thought, no, but I thought the people... Oh, the people who made them, them. Yeah, their faces melted off. Uh, yeah, the yeah. people in the factory, that was real bad for them. Um, that was radium. Radium. Uh, radium, the raddest of the... The uh, raddest way. Uh, oh, yeah, don't lick that brush, for sure. Mayan number dice? Does that Mayan number dice, you? those are pretty fucking good, actually. Electric dice roller. What? <laughs> uh, just confused. Uh, there's nothing, like, too fucking silly turning up. Super Dice Battle! That sounds amazing. Let's get that involved in our lives. Dice Quest. Okay, that they, sounds They're good. hitting me with some good fucking names. Yeah. But can they deliver? Super Dice Battle sounds great, but Mayan Dice? Yeah, they're cute. Very cool. Kind of hard to read. Looks like a fun frog. <laughs> Happy Frog Dice. So what is a dash of five? Sure. Is this like a Roman numeral situation? Yeah. Kind of makes sense. They're fun. You know, you're probably not going to use them for playing games. No, not unless you play against a Mayan. Right. Okay. And then it's only polite, isn't it? That makes sense. Super dice battles. Great. Someone did a game... Um, Dice Throne. It had a big Kickstarter, and now after they got successful, they got um, the license to make Marvel versions of it. Um, the idea is you buy a pack, which is like one character. Um, oh, I remember seeing this. And then you can play against any other character. They're meant to be totally balanced, and it's kind of like playing Yahtzee, but with like fantasy elements. So you've got like different symbols on your dice and yeah. you roll them. And you can do a re-roll and then you can match your symbols to your different powers and trigger. It's a bit like Dicey Dungeon, basically. Um, and the other, and you, you know, you're just trying to do damage to the other person and beat them before they, they beat you. That makes sense. You might like it. Who's the coolest in it? I've only played, I played two games of it. One with like, it was Pyromancer versus Vampire. And then I oh. played like, Doctor Strange versus Black Widow or something like that. I can't Can remember. Pyromancer fight Spider-Man? Yeah, apparently. Wow. 
because it's all the same rules. It's all like, you know, it's just a different theme over the top. Okay. I'm sure they're not completely balanced. Like, there's no way you could get them all balanced, right? Yeah, like... And maybe someone's got a cool, you know... Oh, yeah, if you roll six of the rare symbol in one go, you get your mega attack. You win. Um, so, yeah, if you roll that, great. But if you never roll it, then you're weaker. I don't know. I've got no idea. I only played it twice. That was kind of fun. But the dice are not as exciting as you'd hope. Uh... See what I mean? Like, they're yeah, considering how much yeah, effort's gone okay. into everything else. Yeah, the dice could be a little bit prettier. Yeah. They just went down the pure legible route. <laughs> Noobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're mm. okay. Yeah, not a bad little game. Uh, Necrochasm. Oh, today's a hundred bucks. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Holy shit, Necrochasm, thank you. There's all the erotic centaur talk. Mm, they're here for the... Uh, I can't blame it. They say, Tom and Ben, long-time VOD and clip watcher, contributing to the inevitable Vietnam mini fun. Uh, I finally decided to get into painting and playing with little men. Oh. Uh, thanks for all the good times and ridiculous laughs. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. Thank you so much for your support. Holy moly. And I'm so sorry we inadvertently got you into Warhammer. Oh, God. Like, we never p paint it in that positive a light. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're always pretty grumpy. <laughs> But uh, uh, apparently that reverse psychology is working. Yeah, you just got to neg people into uh, getting, buying your product. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, because they are people who are war gamers or potential war gamers. Mm. So none of them are going to be familiar with like the game, right? <laughs> yeah. So they don't understand any of those principles. Yeah, they're not immune. Um, they haven't built up that resistance to it. Okay. We did it. Man, if we'd got like a commission, if we'd got like 2%, of all the money anyone who'd ever got into Warhammer spent on Warhammer because of us. Holy fuck, yeah, then we'd be buying the One Ring card. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, like someone buys a starter set and a pot of paint, like... We're almost right, there. We're a million. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is Blood Bowl worth getting? If you like, Blood Bowl. Yeah, it's, it's a game. I used to play it a lot. Yeah, I used to play so much of it. Um, I've not played the new edition mm. um, very much. I just got a little bit frustrated with it. it Too many times have I just like triple, triple one into turn end. Oof. And just been like. He's a very feels bad man. Yeah, um, I think I could, you've got to change your mindset though. I think to enjoy Blood Bowl, you've just got to be like, it's a risk management simulation and sometimes everything's going to go to shit and that you can't help that. Yeah, like, I think you can only take it so seriously. Yeah. Like, it's fun I, to play. And some teams are more reliable than others. Uh, yeah. I think I got, always got frustrated fighting dwarves because they are so reliable that nothing ever goes wrong for the dwarf player. Yeah, because they're never trying to do anything wacky. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're just slow and steady and yeah. you've got to take some risks to beat them and sometimes when those risks don't pay off and you never get the, the swing back on the... Yeah, yeah. On the luckometer. But I um, always mm. loved loved a dwarf. Uh, heroically average. Then it's five bucks. The heroically average. Thank you. Say, baby man, Tom. Man, baby Ben. Ooh. Uh, nomad update. Uh, I've stopped in with the family for a bit, hoping to throw off the wheels of nomadism. Oh. Uh, but the rental market sucks. Mm. And I just went to a nice little spot to build plastic toys. Mm. Uh, the brick and mini varieties. Nice. Cremolingus. Cremolingus. That's a, that's a thing. Uh, well, good luck with your travels. Yeah. Or not travels. Yeah, well, you're settling down. Seabest, uh, and it's five bucks. Are you Seabest? Thank you. It's a Hello Disney's Ben and Tom, a Weinstein Company production. Ooh. I hope you're having a nice evening. Well, we were. We were until you threw that shade at us. What the hell? Jeez. Jeez. 
Uh, what about fun spinning tops? I thought you said spinners weren't nah, dice. they're not really dice, are they? We're in the thing of none of these have launched yet. Yeah, I hate that. Because now I'm never going to look at this again. Yeah, because we already know it's a spinner. It's not fun anymore. D6 and D20 options. I do not care for a D20 spinner. Because <laughs> or... you're never going to be sure what yeah, side that's landed really on, like, are you? Look on top of it. Uh, Chrome, doing its 10 bucks. Are you Chrome? Thank you. It's a cyborg, Starman Ben. If Inspector Gadget mm. was a tech adept in Warhammer 40,000, mm -hmm. would Dr. Claw be an orc or a necron? Uh, is that cat a grot or a scarab? Mm. Uh, go, go, Omnisire, drill, fist. Ooh, okay. I mean, they both fit. Which is more fun? Mm. Orc is... It's got the claw. Just makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be a grot. It would be a squig. Yes. Definitely. I feel like the general incompetence would suit the orcs better than the necrons. The goofiness. Yeah. Uh, I think they'd be a more fun... Fun enemy. Mm. Um, yeah, let's go with orcs. Uh, so he's an orc. And he can be called Doctor Claw. Oh, nice. Double puns. Uh, Jeremy donates 10 bucks. Hey, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. I say, I love you, Ben, but I've told you about a thousand times. Mm. It's Jeremy, like Jeremy. Jeremy. Outraged, unsubbed. What did I say? You said uh, Jeremy, but it's Jeremy. 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 Uh, Ooh. They're kind of they're kind of fun. That looks like one for you. These ones look a lot like old school iron die. I hate the iron die. Iron die, very cool dice. If they if iron die were made out of plastic, I'd be a thousand times more into them. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to be renamed, though, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. I like hexagon dice, actually. That cool. The more I look at it, the more I like it. Like the honeycomb. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Not the easiest to read, but that's a pro in my books. Yeah. Uh, oh. Circumscribed dice. I misread that, first of all. Circum circumcision dice. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh, some ultramarines. Ultra Sorry, marines. Omega. <laughs> Inverted Omegas. Wow. Oh, yeah, I want a bronze hexagon dice, please. That's my choice. I'm sure that could work out. How much is one dice from any collection? 14 bucks. Estimated delivery August <laughs> 2016. Sweet! If we order it now, Tom, we get it seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Time travel dice. <laughs> Last updated 2018. Well, I guess they delivered <laughs> a long time ago. Do they still still go? And most Kickstarters just they're done when they're done. You know, they don't they don't redo them or have them on sale afterwards. Uh yeah, they have not posted in a long time. Mm, okay, because you're never getting those. Shit. Uh, Murphy, 7801. Uh, the next three bucks, thank Murphy. Thank you. There's a question for Tom. Excited for Pirate Borg? Question mark. Is that like Mork Borg, but with pirates? Yeah. I feel um, like your friends have drained any love you may have held for pirates. I used to have so body. much love for pirates. And... It ruined. Got, it got heavily sapped out of me, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I already own a copy of Pirate Borg. Oh. Back to that Kickstarter. Nice. Um, and it was delivered a while back. Um, and I think it's cool, but I feel like they kind of missed the point a little bit of Mork Borg, which was it's super rules light, very mm. open. And they added some very, very complicated ship-based navigating battle systems to it. It was like... Mm. That should have been ultra dumb and goofy, not I don't need hex maps and wind speeds and directions to No, that's not what you're playing that game click, for. Click 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 around. Um uh, but I did just buy, literally just bought a copy of 
Orkborg. Ooh. Uh, which is... That's cool. You're basically orcs. What kind of orcs? Like space, 40k space orcs. Oh, amazing. But Like rogue not, trader orcs. Uh, it's legally distinct. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, oh, they've even got around. like hulks. Uh, yeah, but it's not a space hulk, Ben. <laughs> it's something different. Spelt with a C, not with a K. Um, and... Uh, very cool. I also just bought the Blade Runner from Free League. Mm. Um, because I heard very good reviews of it, uh, but I've not had a chance to sit down and read it because I've been a busy, busy baby. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I saw this because I was going to buy the Blade Runner thing, but then I saw they had a copy of Orkborg. Mm. Um, and it was like five pounds when I saw that it was going on eBay for like 40 quid. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm buying that. Mm. Uh, did it. Gonna order Orkborg now. Uh, see if you can find it uh, somewhere cheaper. Don't don't spend 40 quid on it because that seems insane. Mm. Um, Looks really fun, though. But yeah, it's like just super goofy, um, really, really light, has amazing art. Like, this nails the, the vibe. I feel like Pirate Borg missed a little bit for me. Mm. Um, in just trying to be a bit more seriously. Do like, you get to roll for what cybernetic upgrades you have? I've not had like a good chance to read through it, but I'm pretty sure you can. Your head's been replaced with a toaster. Great. <laughs> oh, perfect. Great. <laughs> when every time you have an idea, does it go pichonk? <laughs> uh, you would hope so. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, plus one to presence test due to your cool head. <laughs> Bread turns into toast, also does muffins and crumpets, but the recipes for both of these are lost to time. Shit. <laughs> My God, we live in a post-crumpet universe. Wow. God. Oof. What hellscape could that be? <laughs> oh, God. Just like, look at that character sheet. Amazing. So good. Um, so, Eldritch Nerd. Doing it's five bucks. Hey, Eldritch Nerd. Thank you. They say, Tom and Ben, I'm thinking about getting into Warmaster or Kings of War. And we'll print them at 15 mil. What army combinations are more interesting? Chaos versus Empire, Vampires, or Tomb Kings? Chaos versus, Chaos versus Empire, Empire versus, versus vampires. vampires, or mm. Tomb Kings versus Orcs versus Lizardmen. Okay. I would personally do Chaos, Empire, and one of the other three. Vampires and Empire are surprisingly similar. Well, vampires end up being this weird halfway house. I'm thinking, I'm going to speak from Warmaster. Oh, this is from a Warmaster point of view. Okay, cool. From a Warmaster perspective, hmm. Chaos and Vampires don't play a million miles apart because both yeah. are... They're both melee only. Pure melee armies. Hmm. And Vampires and Empire are not a million miles apart hmm. because they are a lot of cheap infantry. Hmm. Um, so We've got three sort of similar ish. The vampires, I feel like this unhappy medium. Yeah, whereas Tomb Kings are very much different to every other army in the game. They're like, they've got loads of chariots. They've mm. got a bunch of war machines. They've got some big monsters, um, and they've got their unique ordering system where they can't they can't use reactions. Oh yeah, well yeah, the um, vampires have that as well. Oh, okay, and then the orcs. It's just another big horde on me, isn't it? Yeah, like, I do... I like Orcs in Warmaster, but, God, you've got to have a love for the game to uh, mm. be playing Orcs, because they are frustrating. In my limited experience... I haven't played a lot of Warmaster or Kings of War. I've played a little bit of both. I believe Warmaster works better with larger armies. I wouldn't want to play a small game of Warmaster, because it's no. so dicey. Like, you need... 2,000 points is the minimum you minimum. should play. Probably 3,000. 3,000. It just works better. Yeah. Scaling it up, it just only gets better. So I don't know how much, how many models you're thinking of printing, but if you don't want to do it a fucking enormous army, I'd probably stick with Kings of War. That works better at smaller scales. Um, but then I haven't played enough of Kings of War to know about how the armies work. But there are rules for all those armies in Kings of War. Um, I mean... I think Tomb Kings, Orcs, and Lizardmen is more interesting. You have way more variety of painting like schemes going on there. 
way more variety of like army styles and fighting styles. I think that's just generally the more interesting combination. I don't know if that's the best from a thematic point, though. Well, you could have the lizardmen who live in the Southlands fighting the Tomb Kings, right? And then there's orcs everywhere. Yeah, they're not like the most iconic matchup. No. I mean, Chaos Empire and, and Vampires is all old world based. But you could swap the vampires out for the orcs and just have like a three-way empire war. You know, have the Storm of Chaos, basically, with Chaos and Empire and Orcs all fighting each other. I think that'd be pretty pretty rad. They've all got reasons to fight one another in, like, a war triangle. Yeah, I sort of sort of like that vibe. Or maybe even you could, could get Lizardmen. Because Chaos and Lizardmen, they're not friends. No, not and, one bit. But I guess they don't fight a ton directly. Not Lizard like Men traditional warriors of Chaos. They'll fight demons more than warriors. Mm. I don't know, just the, the things, whatever you like, whatever models is coolest. And you can try both games out, costs you nothing. Like, you're basing them up the same either way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think smaller games, Kings of War works better. It depends how many models you're printing. Chaos Emperor and Orcs, that's what I would do. I think that would be a nice a nice mi mix. Hmm. Uh, Tortron! Hello, Tortron! Hello, Tortron! They say, hello, Bim and Tim. I work at a company that produces the Games vs. Reality Show for the Dutch MOD. And oh. I, among other things, collect the clips to be used. Ooh. The subject was terrain analysis in the context of military construction. <gasps> Until next time, Winky Face. They're the Vodgobo in the research team hiding their Kremlo badge. Holy shit. That's amazing. Right. Can you... If you give us a heads up about a future video, we could purposefully make a clip for it. Give us, like, the lead-in. Yeah. If it's like, oh, it's about fucking, I don't know, navigation. <laughs> it's about <laughs> retreating. It's about yeah. something. We will really, <laughs> we'll do the most elaborate, ridiculous clip yeah. possible. And see if we can get back on the show. Can you just, just give us a, it's about ambushes. Oh. Well, just give them the Brothers Doomborn, that whole thing. Uh, yeah, let us know, and we'll we'll make a goofy clip. <laughs> but it'll be, like, totally legit. Yeah. Um, God, yeah, if we can get Kremlo in there. Sadly, that's classified. Bam. Yeah, I mean, it, fucking everything is with the military. Will never tell. <laughs> Not worth losing your job over, though, is it? Really? <laughs> Winky face. You know, we don't we don't read out every donation. That's all I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> Next on the BBC, your scars colluding with the Dutch military. <laughs> uh, a beautiful mm. Smurf Marine, and it's five bucks. Thank you, beautiful Thank Smurf. You. They say, uh, uh, me, Tom, and Mr. Ben uh, finished the Lion book, and mm. I fully concur with Ben's opinion on it. Mm. Wouldn't be surprised if Ross is the next Primark they bring back because of how many times the Lion moans about loving and or hating him. Mm. Chrono came to kick ass. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be one of the more popular ones. I guess it depends on secret sales figures of how many Space Wolves they're selling. You know? They'll just look at whichever chapter sells the most stuff and bring that one back next. Yeah. I also think Limonross is probably the most interesting one to bring back from a model perspective. Unless you did Jagatai Khan on a cool bike. Well, they wouldn't put him on a bike, would they? On a cool bike. Because they fucking hate putting on um, cool guys bike. on bikes. Now, did you see that White Scars Battle Force box they did for Christmas? <laughs> like, hey guys, wait for me! That's embarrassing. <laughs> that fucking sucks. <laughs> okay, I'll see you there. Save some heretics for me. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking lame. <laughs> He's the only unique White Scars model in 40k that they make. And he's not on a fucking bike. Like, what are you doing? I mean, 
sell him on a bike and on foot. Do it as a cool double pack, you know? And same with, um, wow. which world? I can't remember how to spell this guy's name. Take thy calm. Um, like, not on a bike. There's rules for him on a bike. <laughs> But you've got to chop up your 100 pound fucking Forge World model. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they're 100 quid. To try and fit them on a bike. Fuck like, balls. what? Like, I can see why maybe they want the Primarchs on foot or whatever, but. It's like not giving fucking Korax a jump pack. Like, why would you. It's literally what he's famous for. Very, very odd decisions. They just seem to hate white scars for some reason. Yeah. They only have two unique character models, neither of them on bikes. That sucks. That really sucks. <laughs> Lame. Uh, and Alice Lycoris. Um, and they say, they're doing it five bucks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I've got a link. Oh, uh, my copying skills are bad. Uh, they say, Tom and Ben, long time mm -hmm. Vodgobo, uh, redacted time stream vermin. Mm. Uh, I wanted to share my Death Corpse of Krieg, Lehman Russ, and Basilisk. Ooh. I painted trans squad markings on them uh, to trigger the Nazis into outing themselves. <laughs> it's surprisingly easy. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How people, some people who will call other snowflakes are surprisingly easy to get upset over really minor stuff. Yeah. I don't understand it. I thought they were like, you know, real hard to upset. Uh, made a just got worse, worse people. But this very lovely tank, very pretty. Yeah, good job. Um, real dirty. In real, real rad. Do, yeah. do they come with crew anymore? They never came with crew. Uh, <laughs> ben, you fucking idiot. Oh, whoops. Do you even play Warhammer? No, they never had crew. The ba the Griffin. You're thinking of the Imperial Guard Griffin tank, not the Basilisk. Oh, I'm typing the wrong oh. fucking thing. Oh, they, they did release metal crew that was sold uh, separately. Uh, I said they didn't come with crew. Because they didn't. You could buy a special pack of ex blister pack of crewmen. So technically correct. <laughs> uh, that's not the ones. Do you know the ones I mean? Yeah, those These guys. Yeah. Who are very clearly German <laughs> World War II guys <laughs> when none of the other Imperial Guards wore those uniforms. They're artillery guys. Yeah. Um... But the um, the look look up the Griffin heavy mortar because that did come with crew. But that because that always came with um, they came in the metal box. bits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those these guys are Cadians. Yeah, they actually are in Cadian uniform. Oh, it's actually surprisingly hard to find a proper model of it. Wow, it's just not that popular at the time. Yeah, it hasn't been a thing for such a long time now. I feel like there was a time when it, those guys came in that box, that basilisk box, because I did have a basilisk. I had a basilisk, and mine didn't come with it. But I did have those figures, but I don't think I ever put them on. Oh. Oh, wow, someone in chat saying, Alice Lacoris says the plastic basilisk still comes with crew, but you don't use them because they're stinky Cadians. Does it? I've never seen plastic Cadian Basilisk crew. What? Does no one ever glue them on? That looks like a conversion. Is that not a tank commander? Or do they literally come with them and I've never seen one somehow? Really? You're about to fucking look like a guy who only plays Age of Sigma right now. <laughs> Not that, Tom. Anything but that. You're going to look like one of those. Did they secretly update it? Because occasionally they do stick an extra sprue in a box without telling anyone. 
Oh, God, they would have done fucking 20 articles about it. <laughs> uh, what are we looking for? Vehicles. It definitely didn't used to. When I got a basilisk 25 years ago, <laughs> exactly. it didn't come with crew. Is there an accessory? Well, I now? guess there is a guy that sits in the, the coppola. Oh, in the generic accessories but crew that every tank comes with. Is that with. not a crew member? Is it not with the tank? He's not Basilisk crew, though, is he? What is he crewing? Whatever you stick him on. What is he crewing? He's not like holding situation. a shell, is he? Or loading it? What is it? he crewing <laughs> in this situation? <sighs> yeah, I think chat's full of shit. I don't think they come with a with a dude standing on the back. Uh, well, I guess you get a standing up guy that could be stood firing up. Oh, right. He's met, the stubber guy could be just stood, stood on the back, couldn't they? Okay. And so can be crewing a basilisk. You're right. I didn't consider the the turret guy. I didn't either, but when you started ruling on technically, <laughs> I had to counter with my own technically. True. Okay, uh, yeah, technically a crewman. But not the one either of us were thinking of. <laughs> no, which makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, God, I didn't realize it, it had this at all. Um, wow. Uh, well, turns out they're a crew. Mm. The more you know. <laughs> Standing guy is pointing boy. Mm. Very good. All right. Well, there we go. We have caught up with all your lovely messages, and uh, we've been proven both right and wrong about. Miniature minutia. Who knows? <laughs> There's a croot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will be back tomorrow? back tomorrow. We are back tomorrow. Yes. So Harry and I are streaming RimWorld two till five, mm -hmm. and then at five o'clock, it's Tiny Teams, and Tom and Ben are kickstarting the launch of a whole week of streaming where the Yogscast talk about all these brand new indie games that you've never heard of made by small teams of developers. It's a lovely, fun celebration of indie gaming. And please check out the schedule for all the streams that start five o'clock tomorrow with your old Tom and Ben. Old Tom and Ben. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, can't wait. I love being an indie game. You oh. sure do. Oh. Made Tiny by... Teams is... That time of the year where Alex finds a whole bunch of games for you to play. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the other way around? Do you tell him about the cool games that he should put in it? He, still, he just goes to my channel and just <laughs> finds those videos. Um, uh, but like already like loads of the games that are in the the thing I've already already played on my channel. Oh. Already covered them. Yeah, uh, you're down in the trenches, wading through those. Itchy IO swamps. There's a lot of garbage, <laughs> but there's a lot of absolute gold. Um, so tune in tomorrow. There will be some hot, hot gaming action. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll watch Harry and Ben rim world, rim yep. it up. And uh, then Tom and Ben just goof around and do oh. some do some things. Should be fun. Excuse me. Amazing. Uh, well, we need to get Ben uh, home, mm. home, home to bed. Past my sick bedtime. He is poorly, but uh, we'll see you then. Thank you so much to everyone who's donated, mm. everyone who's chatted, thank you, so uh, everyone much. who's hung out, mm. everyone who backed me, believing that there was Basilisk crew. <laughs> I respect you for a true, a true friend. Yeah, you were the real hero. Uh, you are the real hero. And please, we beg you, kick uh, outside of the box. Please. Souls. Please come back to us. We're Please. sorry. Please give us Kickstarter roulette. We loved it. Bring it back. And we didn't realize, did realize how fucking bad Kickstarter was. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was your fault, but it's I not. Have no idea. <laughs> uh, until next time, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Boop. End. End straight. Boot on no work. Boot on no work. <laughs>